Thanks for coming. Got two special guests with me today. I got Matt today. Go yes. ahead and plug your podcast for us today. Oh, there's going to be no scroll underneath? Nothing. Oh, there tech- will be. Oh, there, yeah, is? there will be, yeah. I was only kidding about that. Uh, I was going to bring a little cardboard and just put it right here. <laughs> Listen, we're professionals here, man. You definitely are. Uh, so I am the co-host of the Power Chords podcast, which you can find at powerchordspodcast.weebly.com. I also do 53.5, the official Striper podcast. So for anybody that remembers Striper, I mean, you don't say remembers because they're still making new music. They had a new album come out a couple weeks ago. Um, Striper.com, you can find that. And I do a show called The Radio Eclectic, where for an hour every couple weeks, I play DJ playing all the brand new releases that are coming out. And you can find that one on Podomatic and I think some other places. But if you go to my Facebook page, you can just hear me yakking and talking about this stuff all the time. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you do some pretty neat stuff, man. Thank you. I, I got to tell you, <clears throat> I am I always wish I could be better at music. You know, I, I enjoy music. I, uh, you know, it's, it's I just, you, you bring it to a whole new level of just, I mean, the stuff that you know is insane. It's sad so. because <laughs> there really isn't a whole lot other than being on a game show and writing books about it. I don't got anything else I can do. I can't go talk to my wife about it because she's tired of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can only know so much about something where people are just like, "Yep, enough." Yeah, yeah. Unless you're yeah, with the you, people you know about. You got all those stories and all those memories that'll last forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not many people have that experience. Yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. Before the music thing, I did a comic book podcast um, with my friend Brian Latendry, who we do power chords together. We did it for twelve years, and oh wow, ended up like we were when we started. We were one of the first podcasts out there. Like we. We had nobody to turn to. Like, w- we run into an issue. It's like, okay, well, who can we talk to? Yeah. Nobody, because there's like three of us that are doing this. So we were really early in Paving this. Paving the way. Yeah, and we, yep. we had a huge following with it. We, we would do New York Comic Con, all the big shows all the time. Um, that was like our first taste of celebrity, and it was kind of nice because yeah. you could go and be a celebrity there, and then on the way home, you're like, well, I'll be empty in the trash and doing the litter box <laughs> any second when I get home. Just so. like everybody else. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So for our viewers, too, we got my friend Bobby here today. What's Shout up, out to Bobby. Thanks for coming down, buddy. No problem. I'm glad you, know, you came, man. I, I don't have the uh, accolades like Matt does over there with music, but... Uh, Matt know. is the guru today. I'll, Matt, I'll tell you Matt's this. Matt's the guru. No, you know what? The, <laughs> our, our bonding experience was last weekend, so we're recording this on a Tuesday. So we met on Saturday. Yep. Um, big party at the trailer. I, I don't want... I keep saying trailer, trailer park. park. Campground. <laughs> Campground. 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 <laughs> There's a huge difference. Yeah. There yep. is. A huge difference. <laughs> However... It became very trailer parky, I think, when we started throwing furniture into a fire pit. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, you know, that was. Uh, hey, you're the one that asked for that love seat to go into the fire pit. Well, I just you know, not while I he mean, was not while Jeff was still sitting. I know. On it. I'll, I'll tell you what. When Kenny looked at me, I, I like, oh, this is. I'm going down. And I, so, so I, I told Cheryl to get up, and she's like, why? I'm like, because Kenny's going to take me yeah, out of this thing. Yeah. And then sure enough, five, four, three, two, one, I mean, yeah. I'm on the ground. <laughs> we, were, we were filming it, hoping, and then like five minutes later, Kenny got into his, his thing, and he's like, I'm going to karate kick this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that thing it, burned. Dude, it did, man. It did. It was it so did. hot, I was noticing all these solar lights were going out. <laughs> they were. <laughs> because you had, you had like the mini sun right over here next to us. That got hot. I'll tell you, that was a good time, man. That was a lot of fun. You know, and uh, I mean, there's not that many people that can enjoy burning a freaking (laughs) plastic love seat into a bonfire (laughs) that has skids going in it, you know? Oh, man. I'll I'll tell you, one of my favorite times when we go is when we have fires. It's the best. Yep. It really is. Like, you're in the woods. You get to have that fire. You get to, you know, people are at different levels of drinking or not drinking, and they get to enjoy the fire. Yep. You know, no matter what level you're at, you get to enjoy the fire and you can kind of self-reflect even though you're there with 12 other people. Yeah, it's great for conversation. I mean, there's a reason why great stories come around campfires because you have it and you could have the most introverted people and all of a sudden they're just like, and then you're you're finding out more than you want to about people. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a lot of fun. Like our fire pit at at our house, um, 
I when I dug it, it's a literal pit. I mean, I dug a hole, put some rocks in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you step away, you're going into the lake. And yeah. I love the fact that you have it here. And when you're looking at it, you see the lake shimmering. Mm. It's just, it's that's a home run. That's happening. This is, right there. this is, yeah. This is the good life that I'm living right now. I'm really enjoying Hon- this. Honestly, lake life and camp life, as we call it, are very similar. Yeah. I mean, there's there's drinking involved. There's gathering gatherings getting together. There's food, food. being passed around yes, like crazy. Food. Our food, you know. Yep. I mean, we gotta we gotta plug uh, Cheryl, Jeff's wife. Her deviled eggs, her deviled eggs are amazing. <laughs> I've gained ten pounds since she started making them, but that's all right. <laughs> I mean, for me too, it's been like the camaraderie, right? Absolutely. You know, meeting you guys for the first time last yeah. year. You know, two um, years ago now already. Has it been two years? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Well, I literally feel like, even though I'm not a seasonal campground, um, well, he but, made you but seasonal, I, but, yeah, so, a seasonal you visitor, know, but well. you know, eventually we're gonna get there. But um, why wow, you got the best of both worlds right now? I you know. can just leave. <laughs> you, <have to> <laughs> you have the best of both There's worlds. There's no more furniture to sit on. You might as well go home. <laughs> it's got to be made out of wood. It's the only thing that they won't burn. Well. Um, but you know, just go in there and you guys accepting us and stuff. I'll tell you, it's been uh, it's been awesome. Like all the way through the work week, you're like, oh, I can't wait to go yeah. to the camp on Saturday, and then you Absolutely. finally get there and you're like, let's go. You yeah. know, I never laughed so hard in my life. Yeah, and uh, you are literally the Can Jam camp, uh, champion. So I don't <laughs> well, know how you Ken, land those in. Ken, Ken and I, and uh, Mason and I, you know, it's we just enjoy it. I don't know. We got to get Mason on this podcast. We got to get everybody on this podcast. Now, well, now you can rub it in their face that you were the first one on. You know, but I won't. They, I'll they all it. would. I'll do it. They for all you. would. <laughs> you can. You're more than welcome to. Yeah. You know, they all would rub it in, but I'm just. That's not me. Yeah. You know what I mean, I'm not that guy. Yeah, we'll definitely let them know. I mean, I, br- I definitely appreciate you being on today. We're already Dude, having thanks a blast. For the, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the invite. You know, and when I found out Saturday when I met Matt and that he was going to be on, I'm like, all right, this is good. This is <laughs> yeah. good. This is this is okay. Yep. So you for know? for the audience too, Matt definitely was right there for me when he found out I was making a podcast. You know, he talked about how kind of insane it was trying to figure everything out and where to start. And you know, I, other than my son's friend Mike, shout out to Mike. Um, I didn't know anybody, mm. you know, so I had to start learning some of this stuff on my own. It was getting yeah. kind of crazy, but um, Matt reached out and uh, and then uh, went over to the house. He showed me how to use some of the software, and so I walked out of there very empowered that day. Good, I'm like, glad oh, you that's did. awesome. Yeah, it, it was a good that's feeling. Awesome. I Instead came of walking home, away, going, I will never. I'm talk confused. To that again. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'll tell you. But thanks for the help again. I can't thank you enough. And again, welcome on the podcast, man. You're definitely going to be one of our regulars. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about aliens. Yes. Who doesn't love that? And uh, we'll dabble in a little bit of uh, conspiracy theories today, and then see where this takes us. So we have uh, Darth Vader and Boba Fett here today, and uh, ET. So this used to work. His finger used to light up. I don't know if I need more batteries in this thing. The little lights come in the back. When was the last time you changed or checked the batteries? Uh, probably like, acid probably acid like six there, right? years, seven <laughs> years ago. <laughs> so I found this ET at a, uh, what do you call those? Uh, That's like 1980s market. ET. Yeah. yeah. So he is actually numbered. Um, oh, snap. And uh, I haven't really taken really good care of him, but um, I remember the guy. I saw it there week after week after week. And I, you know, he was asking too much for it. And I, I went up to him. I said, "Hey, you know, we take thirty-five bucks for it." Yeah. I said, "But I don't want to insult you either. So yeah, you know, exactly. if you don't want to do it, exactly. you're not hurting my feelings." And he's like, "You know, this goddamn thing's been here for <laughs> x amount of time." He's like, "Go ahead, take it." And then I went home and googled it. You know, it's only worth a couple hundred bucks, but it's uh, it's pretty neat. You know, ET was a, a definitely a, a staple in oh, my huge yeah in our life. Oh, you know absolutely. What I, mean? I mean, hello. Yep. So ironically, ET, I saw at Cape Cod. When it first came out on the um, drive-in movie theater. Oh wow! And also the first mo- the other, the, actually the first movie I saw on a drive-in was Star Wars. Oh wow! Nice. Yep. They well, did we a, still they did had drive-ins. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They reran it because back. What, what year did that come out? Do you remember? Eighty-six, 80, right? Eighty-five, four, eighty-five, eighty-six. Yep, somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Around there. What about uh, Star Wars? That was like Star Wars was 77. 70, 70, 70, yeah. 77, Okay. Yeah. So I was yeah. only about four May, years old. May twenty sixth, twenty seventh, and nineteen seventy seven. Not that I should know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you definitely <laughs> See, know now that. You, now you're creeping into the other. That's <laughs> the, the other, other realm. Is that's the, the Star other Wars half. Is, yeah. It's out of control. Yeah. 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 Well. I mean, I was just watching Empire Strikes Back again. The, other the greatest night. movie of yeah. all time. Yeah. <laughs> and it really is. That is hands down my favorite. That's the best. And when the you know when I saw the Tauntaun come out. And I'm just like, oh, 
this is bringing me back. And imagine that I was, so I was in, uh, so fourth, seventh grade when Empire came out. So fourth grade for Star Wars. I was Wars. negative three. Yeah, see, <laughs> and so I, I, I do realize that everywhere I go, I'm always the oldest guy in the room now. No, well, um, how old are you? Uh, just turned 52. 52. I'm 40. Yeah. What are you? 47. 40. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, so you have that, you have that title. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm older yeah. than ET almost. Well, no, I am. So. Yeah, yeah. But when, when Star Wars came out, that absolutely just, it, it took the fear. I mean, we'll talk about UFOs and all that stuff. Yeah. It took the fear of space, UFOs, alien life, and kind of mellowed it out a little bit for me. Granted, Darth Vader's not a good dude. The Empire yeah, is yeah. not a good organization. Um, but for me, everything up until that point was scary. Yeah. Like science fiction was scary to me. And I remember Logan's run when that came out and mm. I used to, and it's one of the greatest movies of all time. When the movie trailers were on TV, I would run out of the room screaming because I was so afraid of it. Yeah. And, um, that was the shining for me. Oh, oh that was, just on a that, was that was, that was, movie. yeah. Well, it's this time Here's of year. Johnny. It comes back out. <laughs> oh, yeah. you, you know, what's crazy. Remember the, uh, typewriter scene where he's typing and, and his wife is badgering in his ear. Yep. Uh, Jim Carrey did a, a phenomenal reenactment of that. That was so on point. I don't yep. know if you've ever seen it. No. So you can go on YouTube and find it. They make, they do a split screen. Oh, nice. And it's Jim Carrey doing his rendition of that. And I'll tell you what. What doesn't Jim Carrey do good? It's insane. His, yeah. his you know, The mannerisms, the eye twitches, yeah. the whole nine yards. But that particular scene um, for me was the moment you knew he was starting to break down. And that was the tipping point. And then it went all no, no holds barred from there. Oh, you know, it was insane. Lloyd, I'm a little flat, <laughs> <laughs> a little short of cash. Yeah, yeah. Your money's no good here, yeah. sir. <laughs> I think, and that was a movie I saw way too young. Yeah, oh, me yeah. too. Me I, too. Same here. When, I think, I, think I was like four the first time because yeah. it came out in 1980. And cable really screwed up a lot. It screwed up my entire generation. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Because we were watching stuff that should not have been on. Absolutely. And, you know, it's it's you know, you skip school to watch certain movies. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you're watching it's like three in the after you know, eleven in the afternoon. You're getting ready to watch Prices Right, you flip over to cable, it's like, oh no, there's boobs on there. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, I shouldn't be seeing this stuff. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah. shining when the Scatman shine Crothers gets that gets the axe right in the chest, it's yep. like how can any young kid process that other than just not process Dude, it? Dude, The Shining, yeah. I watched that on like TNT or TBS or whatever when I was like freaking four years old yeah. in my room at yep. 8 o'clock at night on a Saturday night. Like, you know what I mean? Because I'm a little, maybe I was five. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, how many of us haven't been lost in a hedgerow maze in the middle of the freezing cold, <laughs> not wearing a jacket? Yeah. <laughs> Chasing yeah. a little kid. Yeah. yeah. Well, my and, mom used to work 3 to 11, and then she used to come home. And she loved watching horror movies. And I, very distinctly, I remember the trilogy. Remember that little guy? Yep. And I remember her getting me up, and she's like, hey, you want to watch a movie with me? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So here I am, blanketing my PJs on and go, yeah. she's always making popcorn and stuff. And I watched the trilogy, and I don't think I slept for like a month. <laughs> the little pitter-patter of feet. And she used yeah. to mess with yeah. me. She used to do the pitter-patter of feet. And, but that started a... Um, a thing with her like this was constant you know yeah not every week but she had definitely had uh she was very consistent with waking me up we go watch yeah. scary movies together and I, I distinctly remember that as a child and and uh my so my fondness for horror movies um started to grow yeah and then um my fondness for sci-fi kind of really took over that <clears throat> and you know especially like to said with the star wars the et you know um and i'm a huge movie buff and i don't know if we talked about it already but I'm a sound guy. Like, I love sound. Like Sound is what gets yeah. you. That's what gets you. Yep. You know, you can be looking at anything. If there's nothing building up to it, you're not going to feel it. But the second that they put that music into it, it gets you. Yeah. yeah. I like, I, I'm, I'm mechanical, too. So, like, especially with Star Wars, to hear things mechanically happen, you know, you're like, it just makes it feel, for me, it just solidifies that how real it is it could be do you remember you know I, mean? I don't know if you remember this um when star wars was big so you wouldn't have because you weren't you guys weren't born yet i old. wasn't born so yeah. probably like 1978 79 when when the mania was just completely taking over and they used to have all these specials like they would try to draw any little thing it's like let's take a look at tanzania where they filmed all the tatooine scenes for an hour and you're just like oh my god this is the greatest thing i've ever seen yeah. but they had one called the making of star wars and they went out and they showed him doing all the sound effects and the one that I remember the most were the Imperial Blasters 
and you had yeah. a guy out there with a wrench standing <laughs> by a. Uh, it was oh, the just wire. the, the yeah. wire holding up a um, a telephone pole. Yep. Oh, and no he's just whacking just it, smacking it. So I mean, what do you think every one of us did? After that show was over, I we bet. grabbed hammers and wrenches and oh. screwdrivers and started smacking all the power lines we could. I bet. Yeah. Not good. Yeah. yeah. It, well, well, bringing it to, like, you getting scared, you're, you know, getting messed with and stuff, do you, you guys remember Child's Play, obviously. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I don't know, however old, seven, eight years old, something like that, and I'm in the living room with my uh, parents for Blockbuster. You know, every Friday night back then, you would get the movie and you'd watch it. So they had Child's Play on. As soon as the movie ends, well, I had an elf doll, the figurine. <laughs> I still have an elf doll at home. Dude, really? <laughs> so my stepdad goes into my room, gets the elf doll, and positions it right behind me. So when the movie, so when the movie <laughs> ends, I turn around, and I just went, <gasps> I was freaked out. I was scared out of my mind. And it's like, but it's one of those memories that I'll never forget. So you mentioned Blockbuster. <laughs> I had to reach out into the wallet. I oh, snap. Here's the best part. Here's a real, here's the best snap. part. It's a oh, plastic one. Wow. Yeah. This is the one where you got it mailed Before to you. Before it was like, laminated. Holy yeah. cow, I got my own card. It's and VIP yeah. right there. Yeah. yeah. That's just, that, I will never, why, people are like, you know there's no more of those stores. Yeah, I know there aren't. Yeah. But it's it's memory. It's a I thought there was one left. There is they one. Clo- they ended they're... up closing it. Oh, did they really? They did? Yeah. It was on John Oliver because John Oliver, I guess, donated a bunch of stuff to him. Yeah. And they sent it back because it closed. Uh. Well, what about them with Netflix? They had an offer to buy Netflix for $50 million way back when. Yeah. I forget what year it was, 2002, something like that. I'm, I'm guessing. Um, big mistake Blockbuster made. Yeah. Yep. You know. Yep. That was a whole process though. Like you had a you had a work like you had to wait for the movie to come out. Yep. Yeah. And then the movie gets released. And then you had to wait in line at yeah. the store to get the yeah. movie yep. to hope you get the movie. <laughs> like, and then there was know? always that list like when's that guy going to be back with that movie cuz yeah. I'm coming yep. back. Yeah, you know? exactly. You walk to that empty shelf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they always like, oh, used to get you too because late. the cover yep. the movie there. was behind the cover yeah. so you get all yep. excited yep. and you go damn it. Yep. Yeah, you know, I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I also worked at Blockbuster for a little while, too. Oh, uh, did you really? Uh, I, I, I worked there part-time for a while, and, and it was one of the funnest jobs because all I did was walk around and see people and say, so what are you looking for tonight? Don't forget the popcorn. That was basically <laughs> what I did. Yeah. And then it turned into, like, it was almost becoming Radio Shack where they were trying to sell you everything oh, yeah. while yeah, you were there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, so can I get you some popcorn, candy, DVD player, Blu-ray? yeah. yeah. You know, refrigerator of soda. I mean, it was, it was that bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it was the whole oh. process. Then getting home and couldn't wait to, you know, pop the DVD in. And yeah. then, you know, Blu-ray comes out. Yep. And then that was another one. I remember I used to work at Leechmere at the time. And Leechmere. The, the oh, original Leechmere. Leechmere was awesome. Yeah, we had some good times there. Yep. I didn't work on the floor. I worked in the back in the, um, in the warehouse. And then I did some loss prevention. Um, but, yeah, I was uh, – we got stuff early. So we were always getting, like – the first dibs and stuff like that. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> and I remember, you know, back then I couldn't afford shit. I couldn't yeah. afford to pay attention. But I ended up getting myself uh, one of those big laser discs, you know, with the big disc oh, that you put yeah. in. Oh, yeah. And I'll tell you what, the first time I put that in, I thought it was king of the world. Yep. Like, yep. look at this picture, man. Yep. You know? well, the quality yep. is better on a laser disc because the first time I saw Star Wars outside of the movie theater was on that rich friend of ours that had a laser disc. Yeah. No. And yep. he's like, you guys want to watch Star Wars? I'm like, uh, yeah. And he brought out the big, the it was like, old, the disc yeah, was like yeah, this yeah, big, yeah, yeah. weighed about 10 pounds, yep. so, and you open up the door, and it's like, you know, it, it's a, a ship waiting to have right. s- <laughs> other ships well, go with it, and you jam it in, and you watch it. But that was the first uh, bootlegged DVDs that I ever bought of Star Wars were all made off of those laser discs. Uh, so yeah. you got great quality. Yep. I mean, look at look at the VHS, look at the VCRs, the, yeah. the original ones. Them things weighed like 30 oh, pounds. I know. You know, and that's when all of our TVs were on the floor, the, the big consoles. consoles. <laughs> you know, you know, it was a piece of furniture. Yeah. Now it's like, nope, put that on the wall. Yeah. Well, you I know? can't wait till there's no TV. <clears throat> there's and it's a just 3D a screen image right in the middle. Of it's the just floor. a screen. Let's go. Hey, you know? that's where we're going. I mean, we're we're starting out the show with talking about aliens and stuff like that. And look at the Star Treks. Yeah. When they used to talk on their wrist like this, and now it's like. That's reality. That's reality. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I kind of feel like at least the U.S. as a whole, there's a backstory to everything. And I swear they release movies 10 years in advance to get <laughs> in, in your psyche that this is going to be normal. Yeah. I'm still waiting for a Tauntaun then. Uh, 
You know, that's what I. That's how I feel. I remember having the. Yeah, I mean, I think you're right. You know, <clears throat> you know, uh, with all this new Pentagon coming out saying that they have off-road vehicles that they've, um, ha- they have. First of all, who would have thought that was going to come out? Yeah. Right. And coming out this year, the with RAMBs, all this nonsense coming yeah. out. And what about Biden being the one that releases it, that signs the final check for the army to get those vehicles? Right. It's like a- normally, it's Republican Party that supports our military. But it was a Democratic Party that supported our military. Yeah. You know? I mean, I could just imagine, like, so what do you think in your version, like, what do you think an alien is going to be? I think an alien, first of all, I think they're going to drive by this planet with the windows up and the doors locked <laughs> because we're a disaster. You know, if, I, if, I'm an, if I'm an intelligent species out there, I'm not going anywhere near here. I'm just going to keep going. I don't care if I need to use the restroom. Going to keep going. Yeah. Um, it, it's really funny like it's changed so much like when i was a kid um i i brought these my uh, ufo comics because i used to get these as a kid and i would read them during the day and then at night i'd be terrified and yeah. i couldn't sleep yeah. sure. and a plane would fly Absolutely. by and i'm like oh my god it's an alien ship yeah. it's the it's the, the the mississippi swamp monster alien <laughs> coming to get me yeah. um i was so into it during the day and at night i would get scared and I was fascinated. I remember getting all the books. My parents would get me the, the Project Blue books. Oh, you know, no kidding. I mean, oh, they no had kidding. All these, and I'm yeah, trying, I yeah. didn't understand any of it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's like I, I was reading all this stuff and loving it. Project and Blue I, was real. And yeah. I really feel like my, like, I do definitely believe there's life out there. But I don't know if I actually, like, this is where the, this is where I get so wishy-washy. I don't know if I really believe or I just want to believe that there's something else out there. I but I personally think that we're ignorant to believe that we're the only ones. Absolutely, it's I too think big. there's it, there's way too much out there, too many possibilities. And my personal thought is uh, they didn't stop when they went by, <laughs> and who knows? Maybe a thousand years ago they did stop and have kind of been mixing in with us the whole time. Yeah, I mean because there's just too many things that people know. You know, Nostradamus. I mean that. That Beba lady, the Hungarian healer who died, you know, she was 85 years old. She predicted all this stuff that's happening now. Um, the other one, uh, I forget her name. Is she the one that was blind? Yes, yeah, the blind yeah, one yeah, was yeah. Beba. Yeah. Then there's the other one who died in, uh, like, 2013 or whatever. I forget what her name is, but she predicted some of the stuff, too. And I, I honestly believe that in some fashion, our DNA was messed with by somebody at some point. And you look at, like, the stuff. I mean, we, we, we have our technology, but when you think back, when you look at the pyramids look at and the the leaps. stuff like that, all those things, how did they build that? You yeah. know, how do you get a domed roof? How, yeah. do, you, how do you stack how enough? Do you, how do you even learn to do that? How do you that? position and, right? astrologically yeah. with everything like they did at, at such a mathematical level? I mean, we just figured out last week right. that the, <laughs> the space-time travel is mathematically possible. We just figured that out. Well, see, it's math, so I'm out. Yeah, yeah. Got, yeah. I, I, I just go math, like this. So when someone I'm starts d- yeah. talking math, I go. Yeah, see, I'm a numbers guy. Everything comes down to a zero one binary code. Yeah, it I really mean, if, does. If yeah. you look yeah. at Everything. some of the Egyptian hieroglyphics and all these other things that they found, like the Mayans and all that kind of stuff, yeah. there's stuff that looks like it could be very well be an astronaut yeah. or yeah. some kind of alien. So yeah. I, I firmly believe, like, you know, millions of years ago, wherever the um, where we are on the evolutionary track, you know. Whichever some, side you believe, science. Some, yeah, or, some monkeys know, playing yeah. with its shit in, in a field <laughs> one day, and you know, there's an alien above it going, I'm going to go fuck with him right now, and, and then injects him with something. Yeah. And next thing you know, he's walking upright and, you know, building fire, you know. Well, now they're saying that, uh, what, are, what are the ones that uh, were before us? Um, not cavemen, but. Neanderthals? Predis- yes, Neanderthals. Thank you, sir. Um, now they're saying that them, we walked this planet, human beings and Neanderthals have walked the planet together for 3,000 years. That changes all of our history that we learned as a kid. Yeah. It's, it's really, you know, this is where, you know, I'm a Baptist, you know, I'm yeah, a Bible I'm guy. I'm a Catholic. And I... Not practicing. The, the Bible does not disprove a lot of that stuff. And that's another thing. It's like, you know, um, Ezekiel... Saw flaming chariots. Yeah. You know, and, and back then it could have been anything. But you know what? I'm reading that going, oh, yeah, 
those were aliens. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. they showed up. And yeah. Because that's the best way they could describe those things at what, the time. And, and it talks what about. Around what yeah. about the yeah. two-headed monsters and stuff like that? That was, uh, who's the, the fighter? Uh, Mike. Michael, Angel Michael. Okay, I was. I'm you like know Mike what I mean? Tyson. No, 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 no. Angel, uh, <laughs> the Archangel Bucket Michael. Bash. You know what I mean? So he's had all these other battle stories, and if you look at some of those battle stories, you're like, "What was he fighting?" Yeah. You know, and that was how many years ago? Yeah. You can go into. I had a somebody tell me one time about the world before the flood, with Noah, was like a terrarium it was it was like a hyperbaric right. chamber yeah so you would have a little lizard and that lizard would grow to the however big it could go so there there explains your dinosaurs and yeah. there's a lot of bible believers that you know there were no such thing as dinosaurs okay i find that hard to believe since we used fossil fuels yeah we've got exactly. footprints all over the place um so we're getting it's, skeletons it's kind of hard to not believe that but yeah. uh, you don't have to it's not one or the other um, as far as I'm concerned, and that's I like agree, the whole thing with the alien, with the alien stuff. Like when I remember asking my parents, I'm like, "So Ezekiel, don't talk about that." You know, oh, well, my parents were like, yeah, "Oh, yeah. you know, it could have been," and they were always really excited about all. As oh, long wow. as I was reading, reading anything, they didn't yeah. care. Um, and I, I hate to say it, my revelation for Ezekiel seeing flaming chariots wasn't from reading the Bible; it was probably from this one. Yeah, because there's yeah. a whole story in here about how Ezekiel saw it. Yeah, but isn't it funny how it's all interlinked? Yeah, like that's all two total different stories of your life, and it comes back together. And I, I strongly believe that yes, we have our own destiny that we can choose, but I feel like the path's already written. We just don't know it. And that's that's I, I've I've written a couple stories that someday I, I should do, and one of them is about that. One of them is you know we have a path, like you know we are here. And we're going to end here. Yeah. But if we take certain things out of this area, then we are going to put ourselves on that curve. But right. you're you know? still going to end yeah. here. Yeah. I feel like no matter what you do here and here, you're still going to end at this point. And you know the aliens are looking around going, yep, this is exactly – we're we're their Monday night football game. Yeah. I <laughs> hope. <laughs> I <laughs> hope we're the Monday night. Um, look to see. what There's a, some kind of monolith that is orbiting Earth. I forget what it's called. Well, Mars is supposed to be tonight. That you're supposed to be able to see it the closest. Are you talking about the Dark Knight satellite? Yeah, the Dark, the Dark Knight satellite. Yeah, this this thing has been floating up in space, right outside our atmosphere, um, and it, it emits a frequency, and they can't figure out you know the frequency it, that it's I, sending. Yeah, they they yeah. can't, but it's definitely emitting something. Well, it's funny because <laughs> it's like, do you think we're not advanced enough? To be able to read what that signal is, and yeah. we're sending. We've been sending stuff out. Like we sent out the the first satellites went out with, I don't know who what albums Tons of were stuff. in there, but it might Tons have been Beatles stuff. and Elvis yeah. albums. Right, yeah. yeah. So it's only it's only fair they send their stuff. Yeah. yeah well, that's true. And of like, course, somebody's going to listen to it and go, you know, I really don't think that alien music is that good. You know, people yeah. are going to crap all over it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back I just where they hope come from, that like number one hit. <laughs> I just hope that they're they're more aligned with our style of civilization as we generally, yeah, we kill each other and we have wars and all this other crap, but we generally like to just live. And I hope it's not such like a military regimented society that comes down and says, hey, uh, yeah, you're all screwed. Boom, 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 See, we're I'm, taking over. I'm the, yeah. I'm the one that watches Planet of the Apes and really Love roots for the it. apes. <laughs> I, I, I am like, very excited because, you know, as Love a young it. kid, I remember getting a lot of empathy towards animals from the very first Planet of the Ape movie right. yeah. where you've got these humans hanging upside down and you've got these, these three uh, ape soldiers and one of them's taking a picture. Yeah. And it's like, as a kid being like, that is disturbing. And then... You start thinking about it going, well, is that kind of what we do? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, for all we yeah. know, we, you know, Who we're, knows? we're shooting an animal posing it. by it, and the mother is looking at it from the woods. So, yeah. You know, I, I'm that guy. And, and I hate to say, if an alien race came down, I'm going to sell out the humans like crazy. <laughs> I, I just, you know what? I'll tell you where they're all hiding. Yeah, but. <laughs> and not for my own perseverance. You know just what, though? We what if. <laughs> yeah, we, we definitely do suck. But what if. What I'm worried about is that they don't have the empathy. And the other feelings that really make us human, like we get to, we have such a broad spectrum of feelings of terrible to euphoric. Yeah, you know, and I feel like the 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 grays and stuff like that that they talk about, I don't think they're gonna have the range of empathy. I really don't. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna be as smart as us. I think uh, they may be more advanced, but I think they're gonna be like cloned almost. There might be seasonal depression. 
<laughs> yeah, well, I don't feel better until I pass Saturn and then they start to come out of it. <laughs> Not Milky Way's a bitch until you get past it. But it's, it's you know, like that whole thing, I think, I, I really, really thank Star Wars for changing so much of my life, my thinking, all that stuff. Because, again, it was it, – it turned my, my thoughts of aliens into something that was a lot different. Like I was – Always war of the worlds. It's like they're going to come here and kill us. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, they're going to they're going to suck. Well, us that's up what and they wanted you to believe. Yeah, and watching the old Twilight Zone episodes years later, which you know, the greatest show Twilight of all Zone. time. Best, you know, best where, show. Twilight know, Zone is one of the best shows I, ever. We were watching because is it New Year's Eve when they do the marathons? Yep. And I remember yeah. a bunch of years ago watching with our daughters, and it was the one where they killed the alien. Um, who had the book mm. and the book in the cover of it said the cure for cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then you yeah. Will, and they're like, oh, we got a cure. And they open it up and it's all in the alien language. And yeah, then I remember yeah. my daughter being like, I think it's my youngest going, why wasn't the cover in the alien language? Why did they do that? And I'm like, you're missing the point. Right. You're missing the point. But um, I, because I th- they wanted you to read yeah. in that point, And then the cure for the cancer is in alien yeah. because they don't want you to understand. Or that. the, the uh, you know, to serve man. Oh, they're here to serve us. No, they're here to eat you. Yeah. They're here to yeah. fatten you up. <laughs> Great stuff. But it was that that was a lot of fun. But again, once I got out of that fear of it, I really started to enjoy a lot more of it. I, I love the fact that like today's, you know, we're 2020 and you can turn on Discovery Channel, you can turn on Travel Channel, you can turn on ID, you can turn on all these channels and you can get the documentaries, whether they're fake or real. Yeah. And you can Entice your own brain. I just love watching it. I do too. Just everything I about love it. it. Like I love you, it. You can get into some crazy shit. I'd be just be like, let's get, let's. Dude, let's, there's some I nutballs out there, yeah. but I still can't like. Like the guy I with the crazy watch. hair. Oh, who was the guy? <laughs> who was um, Art Bell? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah Art yeah. Bell, coast to coast. I yeah. remember. Yeah. Um, because I I worked a lot of nights and I, I worked a lot of goofy hours, so I remember driving too. in and always putting on AM radio because AM radio you could hear stations from all over the place. Well. Yep. And I remember listening to Coast to Coast with Art Bell, and these people are calling up. And as I'm driving to work at, you know, one, two, three I in the morning. I just saw this light in front of me. And they go into this whole thing about, you know, and I got abducted, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what a bunch of crack. Pop- what was that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's, you do get like yeah. that. But you well, do. George Knapp was on. Uh, um, he's the one with the funky hair. No, he's he's a. He's Profe- a oh, he was Art George Bell's. George Takaki um, or whatever. He was the guy that always filled in for him. Yeah. So he was on the Joe Rogan podcast a little while ago, and uh, I'll tell you, what a smart guy. And he, he wasn't always in the aliens. He, he kind of got roped in with the Bob Lazar thing. Um, oh, he, Bob Lazar. Yeah, so when he met Bob Lazar, he was like, this guy's fascinating. And then, you know, he came from a place where I'm not believing a single thing that you have to say. We're going to continue to do this, and every little thing's was like, he, Dude, couldn't, he buried, couldn't catch him in a lie. They mm, buried you know? Bob Lazar. Because he wanted well, to come to out and him. he wanted to say the truth. Mm-hmm. Yep. They buried him. Yep. You know, know? And, and he, he said things that he couldn't articulate at the time, but he's been very consistent. And now all these things are coming. Like he talked about this handprint scanner that he used to. Years ago. Everybody's like, that's bullshit. They go over there and they find this handprint scanner. Yeah. Like it's, it's a real thing. And he described it as best he could at the time. Yeah. And then when they finally looked at it, they're like, this is exactly what because he was saying. Because it was so far advanced for society mm. that they did not believe it, you know? Yeah, I mean, you look at some of the, like, how far we jump sometimes oh, in technology. It's crazy. I honestly believe that that comes from somewhere else. I do, too. I mean, we have some smart people co- with us, but this if you look at, like, other civilizations. 1956, I mean, that's when stuff changed. They, yeah. they waited a couple years, and then also, I mean, I'm only 40. I remember the holiday records coming out. You know what I mean? We would literally play the vinyl yeah. for the holiday songs. And look at how far we've gone now with, with music, with the way we hear music. We went from vinyl to 8-tracks to uh, CD players to DVRs to uh, what was the other one? Well, we uh, had the, uh, the beta. <laughs> the beta oh, the back beta. in the old days. What was the, yeah. the next one that came out that was like the iPod before it? It was uh, uh, MP3 player. MP3, oh, yeah, yeah. MP3, yeah. Yep. MP3. Yep. That came out. Then we're now we're into the you know I uh, different things. We're into streaming, and it's it's crazy how far in my short forty years we've advanced. And yeah. I agree with you, Jeff. Yeah. I think that uh, that information, that knowledge, 
has come from somewhere else. Yep. And when you look at like anytime I'm flipping through and I always like I have like the five cable channels that, that are you my, watch. My, I go to yeah, here, that's go to here, base. go to here, go yeah, to here. Yeah, yeah. And AMC is one of them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um and um I uh like classic I, channel. Yeah, that I just and and any of the history channels, I love that stuff. Me so too. Me anytime too. I'm flipping through and I see um you know, be like uh, Nazis, Nazis and and aliens or whatever. Like they've got a crap ton of that stuff, and it's yeah. like, all right, I'm in. That was that Operation Paperclip. Yeah, Is that Operation what that was? Paperclip. Yeah. When yep. we took all the the scientists and stuff from Germany and we brought them over to the United States. Yeah. Although these they were supposed to be tried as you know. Yeah. Yeah. Not prisoners of war, but uh, they were war criminals. Yeah, yeah. war criminals. Yeah. They you should have been I mean? in Nuremberg. No, we took them and put them in these labs and said, "All right, what do you know? You're never getting out of here, but yeah. we're going to learn everything that you know." <laughs> and I mean, look at—I hate to even mention his name, but Hitler. You know, they were saying that they had the advanced rockets and everything back then. How did he know that? How did yeah. how you know? Did some alien say, "Oh, listen, I'm going to screw with the American, the human race." Boom! I'm gonna give this guy ten, you know, minutes of information. That's it, and it completely changes the course of history. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, I, I really think that some of these technologies, the, although sometimes I don't think they amount to a lot because we don't we know can't it. reverse engineer. But we always come out with these, like look at the stealth airplanes and stuff Dude, that yeah. we have. Look at the you stealth know, helicopters, even a stealth submarine. We didn't even you know, know yeah. about. We wouldn't know about it, but they had to blow one up when they took out Bin Laden. You know what I mean? That's the only reason that we found out a stealth helicopter even existed. Well, I yeah. remember the stealth the stealth plane. There was always rumors of it when I was a kid. Yeah. yeah. They always yeah. talked about the stealth plane. And yeah. then one of the model companies, like Monogram, made a stealth kit. And I remember like the government flipping out. Like, oh, yeah. You can't release that. <laughs> Total different times. And Yeah. And then yeah. they ended up putting it out. And I'm yeah. like, this, this flies? Yeah. Like, you look at it. It doesn't look like it could possibly fly. It was fly. futuristic yeah. for yeah. the time. You know, it's, I mean, just as scary as the thought of aliens is like going back to Bob Lazar. They tried to erase that guy off the, his history off the map. Mm-hmm. No calling. Mm-hmm. Like, he went to college. No, nope, they can't find anything Done. about it. They tried to totally get rid of yep. him. They would fuck with him all the time. Like they would open his car doors and windows at night. Yeah. He'd get up in the morning, all his, all his he stuff was would be always open. watched. He was always patrolled. Yep. It's like, you know, just because he was trying to release, he was trying to break the mold mm. from everybody else that knew what he knew at that time. Yeah. You know? I mean, I get the hysteria. Like, if you told certain people, you'd have people jumping off bridges. Yeah. You know, and, and I, get, yeah. I get I get, that. But we can't know the full truth. Yeah. We I, can't. I don't think we can process it because of the way they've already brought us. We're all brainwashed. And I feel bad for the first group of aliens that show up because somebody's going to look and go, are you Republican or are you Democrat? <laughs> and then all hell's going to break loose with this, and they're just going to leave. Yeah. You know, we had gifts, but we're out of here like, now. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm fascinated how it's going to happen. So, like, remember V? V See, was awesome. V was, was a favorite. classic I remember show. The the first With 15 the minutes of that oh. were like terrifying, and Dude. and the special effects weren't that great. That was like eighty, but it was pretty good considering. Yeah, yeah. But that was exactly the way I thought that it would be. Dude, yep. um, I like remember they just showed up and they didn't move. Yeah, um, and it was like, remember Jericho? Remember yeah. Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jericho was the show that made me think. Yeah, this is exactly how I felt a nuclear disaster was going to happen. Yeah. You, you know what scares me about like V and stuff like that is I'm petrified that I'm going to be lulled in to like, you know, they they had the beautiful well, women. Well, they, the the yeah. 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 they were all I'm hot. They were all hot. The dudes I'm going to be lulled in like, oh, yeah, here, I got candy for you, little boy. You know, yeah. And then all of a sudden, blah. Yep, you're gonna be yeah. dead. He's eating your backbone. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, eating yeah. your skull. You know. And it was it was so funny because I remember. Um, I met, oh boy, I think it was the dark-haired alien lady at a show years and years ago. And I think I said something so stupid to her, like, I thought you were so hot that <laughs> even when you opened up your mouth and threw the rat in there and chewed it, I still thought you were hot. That was like my thing I said to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. she yeah. must have walked away going, what the hell is wrong with that? Dumbass. Like, this is why I don't do shows anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, you um, know, I'm just afraid, like, I'm going to get up in the morning, I'm going to be like, wow, today's such a good day, sun's going to be out. I'm going to walk on the deck, and then all of a sudden I'm going to look up and go, shit. <laughs> and next thing, <laughs> next, next thing on the news, it's going to be like, there's 75,000 of these things across the United States. You know, and then pandemonium is going to come in, you know, because, you know, it's not going to be like, uh, you know, they're going to hold a press conference no. <laughs> outside it, of the universe. And you go, know what, though? I mean, they, honestly, I, I believe opposite. I really think there is going to be a press conference because I think they've been working with our governments and not just the U.S., 
I think our worldwide governments, they've been working with for probably thousands of years. Yeah. So it's going to be one of those things that, like, okay, we're letting you run the show. Well, now we're taking it over. That's why senators, I guess, have uh, no uh, no term no limits. term limits because <laughs> they got to keep talking. That's why some of these doofuses are, you know, a guy can't even sit up straight. How is he yeah. supposed to make a decision? Right. Well, he's taught, been talking to the aliens since the fifties. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And how do you get that kind of clearance? You know what I mean, like. Dude, I what, what, how do they pick you out of a crowd going? You're our dude. Yeah, you're the dude. You we're know gonna, what? Though, you, <laughs> you know what? Honestly, clearance, Twitter account <laughs> clearances are not that big of a deal. Like I had uh, a TS clearance for when I was in the Marine Corps. Um, it's good for ten years, you know, stuff like that. And it's only because of the it wasn't analog, but it wasn't digital either. The way our voices were portrayed over the radios. That's why we had to have the clearance for it. And it's like you look back at the stuff, and I'm like, okay, this was 2000, and I'm talking on a satellite phone with the airplane up in the sky, and I'm in the middle of the desert, and I'm just a lowly E3. Like, I'm nothing. You know what I mean? It's like, what the hell else do they have out there that they're not acknowledging? You know, I completely forgot about another movie that completely changed the way I looked at science fiction and alien life was Close Encounters. Oh, oh yeah. And I will say, Man. I mean, one of my 10 favorite movies of all time, um, I think I've owned the VHS, the DVD, the Blu-ray. I mean, it's one of those movies that I just, I eat it up. I love that movie. I love everything about it. Uh, I love the magic about it. I love yep. the insanity. I love, um, there is just nothing wrong with that movie at all, except that it ends. Yeah. And th- that whole thing, like, I mean, I still get choked up when the ship opens up and all the people from the Bermuda Triangle start yeah. coming out. Yeah. Oh, my and God. And I remember seeing imagine? that. Seeing Not that. aged a bit. Yep. Yeah. My dad, yeah. I remember yeah. when they went to, when they started coming out, I remember, see, I saw the movie with my dad. My mom was a night nurse, so my dad and I and my sister saw a lot of movies. Yeah. So we saw that. And I remember my I'd saying to my dad, I'm like, well, what do these pilots do when they go home and their wives are like 70 and they're are, are they're already married and they think they're dead? And my dad's just like, I don't know. <laughs> you know he gets a new one. I need an answer. I need an answer. <laughs> but it was... Uh, I He's mean, like, woo I'm still 29. To me, what a beautiful movie that was. I mean, that yeah. that's really honestly the only way to describe it. It's just such a beautiful story. It's a beautiful movie. Everything about it. Uh. Uh, because it starts out so terrifying. Right. And you know when the when uh, Barry the little dude gets ki- taken out of his house, um, you know it, it's there's a lot of things in that movie that still affect me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, certainly, you want to talk about noises. You want to talk about um, things that happen. Like you know the I, I freak out at a house with vents, the floor vents because when it that, kicks on, when they start. Remember when the screws start right. coming out? Right. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. So I see that. I, I still get a little a little creepy about that. Like. You might want to put a rug over that in case the aliens show up and try to steal your kid through there. Oh, the, no kidding. The dog door. I mean, all oh, that right, stuff. Right, because yeah. that was wow. just, you what, know. Supposedly, they just digitally remastered that uh, movie. I got the Blu-ray that came out about a year ago, two So years this was ago. supposed to be released in September in theaters. Yeah. But because of everything that was going yep. on, we, we should research that and figure out what that is. Because I'd love to go see that again what? when it hits the theaters, if they if they actually ever uh, do it. They're going to release it. Yeah. You know? What was that movie... In the mid '80s, where all of a sudden a hole would appear in a backyard, and they would get like sucked down through it. It was like a poltergeist. S- no, not the poltergeist one. Um, it's around that time frame. Uh, I'm blank. Yeah, it's like out in a backyard. Anyways, I f- I forget the name of the movie. But that's probably my biggest fear is that the ground going out <laughs> from underneath <laughs> you. Because what do you do at yeah, that point? Yeah, like yeah. you're you're just toast. You know, and now more like more times than not, it's happening. You see them in Florida. You see them in California. These twenty-six foot sinkholes yeah. are popping up and dropping forty feet down. Yeah, it's fracking. <laughs> like you know, it's crazy. Yeah, but you it's never know. Like uh, like a lot of these things happen in the ocean. So, but we don't see it, yeah. right? Well, um, on the Joe Rogan show, they had a uh, officer Fravor or Captain Fravor. Um, he was a Navy pilot, and and that's th- I can get behind a Navy pilot. Like, there's certain people Absolutely. that I would believe in, in a Absolutely. heartbeat in a Navy pilot. Those guys just don't lie. Exactly. And uh, he talked about it. He was on a training mission. All of a sudden, they diverted his training mission, and said, "We want you to go take a look at something." So him and another plane go out there, and 
that's the video that you see where they're tracking this thing on the flare. And uh, this thing goes from 6,000 feet or something like that, or 60,000 feet to one foot above the water yeah. in less than a second. Yeah, crazy. Or less than Insane. a blip on the radar. Insane. And it, it, like, it turns upside down, then it goes, and they're, and they're tracking this thing. And, it, and you can tell it's real. The reactions are real. The computers that are actually tracking this thing are, are physically trying tracking to catch it. up. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, and how amazing is that for him to see? And he, he describes it because you're looking at it from the flare system. He's actually looking at it from what it is. Real time. And it was <laughs> like a white tic-tac shaped object that would lay flat when it was hovering. And then it would uh, kind of raise up. up and then go. And the speed and velocity of mm. these things is just insane. It's insane. You know, so, you know, I, where are they, like, if you put us on a scale, sliding way above scale, us. Way, in, in way above us. What makes us, what was different? Energy. You know, energy, exactly. I think it's the energy. Yep. I really, I cannot wait until we crack the code on the blue energy or whatever it's going to be called, where it's boom. Instantly. I, I think Tesla's going to do it. So my, my theories on a lot of that stuff, um, going back, and this is, again, where I would be trying to maybe justify or have arguments with a fellow Christian about aliens don't exist. And I'm like, well, the Bible doesn't yeah. say that there's nothing else out there. Maybe, you know, when God created the, you know, he created us, gave us, you know, Jesus came here. Here's the yeah. Bible. You did, you know, all this stuff, all this stuff. And then we were 29th that, in line. Who's to say that there wasn't, there wasn't, you know, we were, we were the, you know, the we one were that the went 29th wrong, in line. Yeah. And we, and, you know? it wasn't, they just, you know, God just did it somewhere else. Or exactly. That's the way I've always thought. It's like, okay, so these guys got it all right. Like, you know, instead of, you know, 250 different countries, it was one country. So you're pooling all your resources. Yeah. Everybody looked past a lot of the, you know, the silly, stupid things that we tend to look at a little too much. And could you imagine where we would be if people stop looking at race, stop looking at borders? Oh my God! Stop looking at that. Like you think about where where the Germans were during World War II. Um, imagine if they were doing that for good. Like imagine yeah. if they were building this. Yeah. Now, granted, they wouldn't have been able to have the money if they weren't destroying the Jewish population of Europe. But imagine if they were able to do that. And then the Russians got involved and said, "Hey, we got some stuff too. Why don't we all get yeah. together?" And the United States said. Why don't we get together and do this instead of creating all these things that started out as weapons? Yeah, you know, created it for something else. I mean, we probably would have littered and destroyed the moon by now and been yeah. looking for another planet to go. Yeah, yeah but dump garbage on. But you can even take it one step further than that. So, I mean, let's talk three thousand, four thousand years ago, which is a blip on the history. Yeah. So, not I am Catholic, but just to be devil's advocate, what if Christianity and God and everything is already alien? But we believe it because it's our 3,000, 4,000 years of history. But that's really a blip in history. So who knows what is the higher power and what we're supposed yeah. to believe in. Like, we're only believing in what we have been told and passed on from generation. But who knows what happened a million years ago? Yeah. Like, 5,000 compared to a million years ago is nothing. Yeah. yeah. So good stuff. I mean, that's Hello? the stuff where, you know, this is, this is where we need to fire. Absolutely. <laughs> throw Absolutely. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a, yeah, it's a yeah, yeah. furniture. I agree. Start burning I agree. We'll, start, we'll start with the, the fan over there. We'll <laughs> throw that in first. And, then we'll, you know, and don't next? even unplug it because I want to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> we'll live on the edge. Yeah. You know, it's just crazy when you think about everything and people get, like you said, with the racism and everything else, it's it's disgusting. We, we, we are, th I'm thankful that we live in the Northeast because you go down south. And it's a totally different story. I mean, I remember going down to Florida with my, my stepfather and my brother, and I had a Marine Corps shirt on at the time, and we went in a boat, and this fucking, the, I mean, sorry, this this captain. <laughs> okay, this, it is rated R, so we're good. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> this captain starts saying some words that he shouldn't, and it's like, you know, I'm we're all, my brother's 6'4", I'm 6'1", my stepdad's six foot. Like, we all look like normal American white guys. Yeah. I'm wearing a Marine Corps shirt, the whole nine. And he starts going off, and I'm like, I look at my dad, I go, because my wife's Puerto Rican, 100%, and my daughter's half Puerto Rican. I look at my dad, I'm like, I'm going to fucking drill this guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? People just don't and, get it. And my yeah. dad's like, just stop. I'm like, okay. I'm like, you know. Wait till you're a little closer to shore <sighs> if he's on the boat with it, you. Well, I think you, it's going to be like 9-11. You know, like, like, it felt. It was like, my wife's Puerto Rican. Like, yeah. 
dude, yeah. shut up. Like, yeah. yeah. Just stop. It's gonna be like nine eleven. Right after nine eleven happened, you had people holding doors for people. Yeah. And four way stops. Yeah. And then it went away. To go yeah. and, and it and went away. And then it went away. So I, I think that's gonna be, you know, that'll be a changing point because everybody's gonna have to stick together and. You know, we're not going to be the common enemy anymore. We're yeah. going to have the friend of my or the enemy of my friend is my friend. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Um, so that that thought of uh, the chaos that scares me a little bit. Of, but just like the the thought of something out there looking at us or like you know we're the we're like the little, we're looking at the ants. Yeah, is someone you know, else and, looking at and us. He's, you know, he's tapping his buddy who has five heads and ten arms and going, look, look, look at this, you know, look at this jump. <laughs> <laughs> what's your uh, what's your favorite Star Wars character? Uh, you know, I was funny. I was wondering if we were going to get to talk about Star Wars. Uh -oh. I I go right to Luke Skywalker, yep. and the reason being, um, I was a blonde kid that had dreams of more than what I had and what I wanted. And when I saw Star Wars, I absolutely identified with Luke. Yeah, oh, that's funny. And you had a lot of kids like, you know, again, Star Wars, it was like George Lucas wrote it and for produced you? it and put it out for me. Yeah. <laughs> and another big thing about Star Wars when it came out was I just moved from Hamden, Mass to Broadbrook, Connecticut. So it was basically one hick town to another. Yeah. But, you know, a different state. And, you know, yes, it was five, ten minutes down the road. But it was an alien world totally to me. Different. Like I'm like, yeah. oh my god, these people are from Connecticut. I can't even spell <laughs> Connecticut. And I remember walking out on the playground for the first time, the very first day of school, fourth grade. I had a Star Wars shirt on. This kid, Jeff Lloyd, came up to me and said, "You like Star Wars?" And I go, "Yeah." I haven't even seen Star Wars yet because the, the mania was there. He goes, there, "Me too. We're best goes, friends." Yeah. And, the, and he goes, well, "We're all over here talking about Star Wars. You want to go talk about it with us?" So. Instant friends. I mean, That's that perfect. horrible fear of. I mean, then Instantly I was like, this, changed from a shirt. I was this kid. <laughs> I was this kid that was kind of quiet and stuttered. Yeah. So I, that really helped me. And it's funny every time I talk about when I, you know, stuttered as a kid, I start thinking, uh oh, don't stutter, don't go back into it. So I noticed I did it a couple seconds ago. Oh, did you uh, really? Yeah. I didn't know. Like I, my brain starts going a little bit further. Too fast. fast. That's me. Yeah. 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 One so, of my best friends had a stutter, so I totally get yeah. it. When so we were that age. It's yeah. um. Luke Skywalker was just that character that I, I just fell in love with from beginning to end. And I remember at a show, a New York Comic Con show, maybe two years ago, Mark Hamill walked by the table. And he, wa he was 63 walking 63 years old or whatever. Out on his own, like it was like two, maybe he had two people with him. Yeah. And he walked by. And I don't get nervous around anybody. I saw him walk by, and I'm like, I don't even know what to say. And I'm looking at my friend at the booth, uh, Vin Fronte, um, who's my, my publisher for my books, and he's got a comic book company. And I looked over, and I'm like, oh, and Vin's like, who, Mark Hamill? And I'm like, I can't even say it. Just point <laughs> oh. And he stood there and signed autographs for people for an hour. Oh, that's awesome. People just kept globbing. And my, uh. and my buddy's like, go. And I'm like, I can't. I don't know what to do. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I've always been a Luke Skywalker guy. But when I think about, like, Overall appeal, I there's something about the snowtroopers. Oh, yeah. Like an imperial snowtrooper must have been the worst job ever because you must have been like, you know, you're getting your card going, okay, so, oh, crap, I'm a freaking snowtrooper? How did that <laughs> happen? <laughs> Who did I piss off? Right. Because it's not like you're, you know, you're now in the line of fire like the stormtroopers. You're fodder. Yeah. But now you're on a cold planet. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Although they did say that those were warm suits. I right, yeah. <laughs> if they didn't put a uh, – there was no – um. Uh, what do you call it? There was no shields around TIE fighters. So there was going to be no extra armor. Well, or it, heat yeah. in the storm it makes you wonder, was that all an exoskeleton? Which we have finally like broken the mold. Russia is the one that's the advanced on the exoskeleton yeah. suits now. And it's like back in the 70s, that was unthought of. It was a huge, yeah. But now we're actually there. Well, my question, did you chafe in one of those things? Oh, you probably would. <laughs> oh, absolutely not. <laughs> it, it was, very, it was all very like, long. like, did he look at his other stormtrooper and go, does AC? my ass look good in these? <laughs> you know, what was yours, Jeff? What was your uh, favorite character? Hands down, Boba Fett. Hands down. Um, you know, I just realized, and I don't, I don't know why. Isn't Star Wars: Empire Strikes Back the first time you ever heard, the only time you ever heard him talk? He talked in this. <laughs> this is this is where it gets bad. This is where everybody watching this is going to go. Oh, freaking Star Wars geek. Nope. There was the Star Wars holiday special that came out in 1978. Um, it is like the worst thing you'd ever want to see. But as a little kid, I'm watching it going, oh, my God, this is like Chewie's house. This is Chewie's living room. This is Chewie's family. <laughs> and that was where you first met Boba Fett. Right. So Boba Fett was in there. And I believe, yeah, he said something. He was he didn't look the same. He was riding. It was a, an animated thing. 
So technically, the first time he spoke was in in The Empire Strikes Back. Right. That's the first time you saw him until they put him in the special edition of A New Hope. Yeah. But the yeah the first time you ever saw him, and then you you got in the pack of the action figures, four proofs of purchases, you get a free Boba Fett figure. Right. Oh, it's like, geez. holy crap, I got to get that. Yeah. So, you know, cutting out all my little things because I used to save all the cards for my figures. Yep. Um, but, yeah, the first time you ever heard him talk in the Empire was in The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. You know, he's no good to be yeah. dead. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to go opposite level. I'm not a Star Wars geek, as Matt self-proclaimed that he <laughs> is. Um, I don't even remember her name, but the, the chick. She was hot at the Princess time. Leia. Princess, Princess Leia. Princess Leia. She was. I was like, I don't know, five, six years old, whatever I oh, was. Oh, Carrie Fisher. It and was she is beautiful. gorgeous. She, she beautiful, was, yep. you know, God rest her soul. She was hot at the time, and that would I would have to say that was probably my favorite character. And yeah. I'm not a Star Wars geek. I didn't really follow him. I was a little bit too young. I saw it on VHS, you know, in the living room with all my other cousins that were Star Wars geeks mm-hmm. that loved it. You know, a little shout out to Phil and Jeremy, um, but. You know, it's one of those things that it's funny how 10 years difference in age can totally change what you thought was your reality at that time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's like going forward now, 10 years of technology yeah. is insane. It's uh, 10 years is a long time for technology because we keep skipping. What are we on now for iPhones? I don't even know. I'm not an Apple guy. Yeah. Yeah, what I is it like? Know. Twelve, fifteen. Something I don't. Like I don't even know what it is for the iPhones. But it's like that's how far. Basically, every year now, something else is coming out. Something else is coming out. And now, like you mentioned earlier, Tesla. I mean, him and his Nikola batteries, you know, is is a great deal. Yeah. I mean, if if you're willing to take the ride, like invest. Yeah. Like they're they're at that page right now. Justin, what's your favorite Star Wars character? Yeah. 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 Oh, snap. yeah. I'll tell you what. I, I remember watching the first uh, trailer with the new lightsaber. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. Like, Everybody had <laughs> something those. as simple as that. Everybody like, had that. That is awesome. I, I still have my lightsabers at home. I Do gave, you really? Yeah. They're in my comic book room. I didn't show, I didn't pull out my lightsaber. Put no. those in your safe because they're probably worth money now. I just gave they my still work. Same batteries. <laughs> same batteries from like 1999 whenever yep. the, the Phantom Menace came out. That's I funny. just gave my Anakin Skywalker replica to uh, my my daughter's uh, boyfriend. And I will say it here, The Phantom <sighs> Menace, the third best Star Wars movie of all time. Oh, really? Love yeah. The Phantom Ooh. Menace. It was a good flick. You were right about like... negotiations, Master. <laughs> they were short. <laughs> love, love, love that movie. You, you know what movie I really loved, too? It was Prometheus. I don't. I saw it. I don't remember much of it. Yep. It was. Uh, I'm a big aliens, like yep. the original aliens fan. That was just a oh, phenomenal. that first movie, oh dude. Again, aliens, one young, of the too young to see Alien. Yeah. One of the yeah. best movies. Yeah, I was definitely too young on multiple levels when I watched that. But one of the best movies ever. Yeah. Alien. and I think original. it was me and Justin. We we went to go see Prometheus, didn't we? Yeah, and uh, that was pretty cool because it had a really good backstory. And again, that one was was that a Ridley Scott? Yes. So that wasn't that supposed to be. Tied into the alien, yeah, yeah. So this was the prequel. Yeah. So they showed how the aliens came down. They messed with the DNA. He took a vial of something, and he started to kind of disintegrate. And he fell into the body of water. And then that's how the whole thing got started. Um, and these guys were huge. They were like real mammoth people. Um, but I like that kind of stuff. I like going back a little bit. And then. Uh, I do too. I like when you watch a movie and then you watch the prequel afterwards. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It sucks you in. Yeah. Well, you know, it gives you a little bit of backstory. Sometimes I, I miss that. Like, yeah. you watch a new movie and you're like, hmm, what's the backstory on I that? Need the, I need the movie to be complex because otherwise I'm like, oh, okay, Tuesday I got to do laundry. <laughs> Wednesday I got to mow the lawn. <laughs> what, about, uh, what about Blade Runner? See, oh, you know, Blade I, Runner. So Blade Runner was the movie I went to see because Harrison Ford was in it. Yep. Well. Um, much like when I went to go see Apocalypse Now. My dad took me to go see Apocalypse Now, um, New Year's Eve, 1979, going into 1980. And I was I way too young born. for that movie. I was way too <laughs> young for that one. And the only reason I went was because Harrison Ford was in it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I love war movies. But and who was the other guy that played the main robot? Um, oh, uh, Rooker Howard. Yes. God, I love so that guy. Rooker Howard. Yeah. 
looked like my grandfather. Oh, really? My oh, grandfather yeah. looked just had that pier- those piercing blue eyes. Um, so I have a little affinity for Rooker Howard just for that reason. Yeah. My my grandfather actually had the same thing with the piercing blue eyes, yeah. and it was like when you screwed up, you're like, oh crap. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, it was, it's a movie. I hate to say it. I well, I saw it when it first came out. Did not like it. Didn't understand it. Um, then they came out with the like the final special edition this is it version yeah about three years ago bought the blu-ray sat down i'm like i still don't understand it (laughs) yeah and i i tried sitting through the the last one the new blade runner one that came out yeah which i thought was better and easier to understand than the first one but it's still it's still that that was a movie that i think they should not have came out with again i think it kind of killed it like it was it was good the first time and then the second but the third one coming out was like yeah i get i get excited for the fact that i might be able to relive what i relived or what i lived originally and then the new one comes out you get let down you're like oh come on were they replicants is that what they were in that one i'm trying to think of what the clones were i want to say no they weren't replicants no 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 but they it, it you know you look at that story. I mean that yeah. story was miles a uh, years ahead of its way time. ahead yeah. of time. Um, you know where a lot of that stuff where you're thinking, you know, you mentioned earlier with Star Trek. It's like yeah. okay, so we're going to come up with this thing where you you flip it open and you talk, and now we have them. But you know, cloning back then was unthought of. Th- unthought yeah. of, and, and look what we're doing now, yeah. dude. What's it been? Ten years since we cloned the first sheep? Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, come well, on. Supposedly they just found some kind of dinosaur that they could actually. Get some DNA out of. Um, so who knows what they're going to do with that? Did you see the brain they cells? They need to watch Jurassic Park yeah, before they do yeah, that. They're doing it. it did not work did, out. Did you <laughs> see the brain movie, cells? <laughs> Hold on. What about the brain cells that three days ago they just found? They found uh, live brain cells with neur- – not live, but they're frozen – with neurons in them to a human being that was frozen and killed uh, 3,000 years ago. Really? Yeah. They, just this week. So now they're taking brain stems – cells and they're able to br- basically bring it back to life from 3000 years ago. So you want to talk about Jurassic Park yeah, and stuff no. like that. I'm like, going to advocate we bring them back. Let's see what he's got. Yeah, I, I, just you know dinosaurs in general and stuff like I'm all for no, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, all for it. No. That's another thinning the herd yeah. that might not <laughs> yeah, be a bad idea. Sure. I mean, can you imagine like if you were a Neanderthal or whatever they were and back you saw then, that and you know and all of a sudden you know you were You would go hide in your and, cave. Looking up at, you know. You'd go hide in your cave? Yeah. 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 Like, no, mama, stay. <laughs> <laughs> Dad out there. <laughs> the, um, yeah, Blade Runner was one of those ones that uh, really didn't do much for me. I remember seeing Alien when that, like, the when Alien that was cable. awesome. I watched it with my grandmother. She was so hot. My grandmother was watching that with us. And I remember my sister and I, when uh, the thing came out of John Hurt's stomach. Yeah. yeah. When, the, when it came out. And when we watched that, my sister and I must have been like, I'm not eating anything. And my anything. grandmother just looked at us and went, paper mache and tomato soup. Paper mache and tomato soup. <laughs> and then every time it was on, we wanted to just watch that one scene. Yeah. yeah. When the thing came out. And it's funny because, again, you want to talk about something that has a mass, massive effect on who, me. Who was that? Was that Jamie Lee Curtis? Who was it that was the... Um, um, uh, Sigourney Weaver. Yeah. Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney yeah. Weaver. Yeah. Another hot oh, chick had, for her time. You had Tom Scarrett in there. You had yeah. a whole bunch of dudes. Oh, yep. And... Uh, but when people choke, my first thought is like I freak out when people choke. <laughs> yeah, I don't do well. But like, so it's so coming my, out. My second thought is, oh man, something's gonna come ripping out. Yeah. So what? It, so that's got to be a term. So you're claustrophobic plus now the. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm just saying that's got to be a term for what for now? the fear of choking and food coming I have out. No, it's got to be. Yeah, I, there's a term for everything nowadays. It's, yeah, it's if you don't like cracks in the sidewalk. There's a term. Oh, I don't for like it. those either. Step, you step are on hitting a crack and break your mother's back. Yeah, you are hitting. That everything. was a real thing, man. I, watch yeah. me. Watch when I, you know, watch. Really? If I ever walk, I step over cracks. It's, Do you really? Yeah. Um, softball. When I Years go out on the LSD. field, step over the line. Uh, the first time, and then hockey's the same way. I'll hit the ice. I have to step over every line. Nah, the first time. Yeah. come on. Yeah. It's bad. Really? And I'm not superstitious. They, they make help it's for just, that, you know. Yeah. See, I, I, I'm the opposite. I am superstitious. I believe strongly that everything happens for a reason and everything's kind of predetermined to happen. Yeah. You know, and I think that we, I mean, what do we use? 11% of our brain? If that, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like our brains can handle so much more and it makes you wonder like, just give me 24 hours. Let me, (laughs) let me have a hundred percent of my brain for 24 hours, please. Let me just, you know, 
Well, that's you know, I'm fascinated with uh, to get off the subject a little bit, but get into that. <clears throat> I'm fascinated with LSD and those kind of things. Who didn't like your trip when you were 16 years <laughs> old? In I the don't park. know what you're talking about. I never did. That. <laughs> <laughs> I was a I was a drunk at 14. Uh, uh, but I never smoked pot. Peace tree stops. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> Until we discovered cinnamon. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, um, well, peace tree, you could pour water back into it and not get caught. Yeah. It was. Um, and then rumple mints when we yep, found out. Yeah. Like, you mean yep, we could drink half yep. of that and get drunker quicker? Yeah. And it's the same price? Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Um, but I never, it's like I never smoked pot, never even tried it. Um, you Good know, for pop, you. I popped pills in the eighties, but it was mostly the uppers and downers. That's all it was. Like yeah. I'm sad. I need, I need to get up. I'm, I'm up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And then I drank to try to regulate. How about you just stop doing all of it and you're fine. Meanwhile, yeah. your liver's like, come on, dude. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> like, How you do you know, know these advanced lives? Um, these, um, they aliens. don't even eat food. How do they know? How do we know that one day they didn't say, you know what? We're going that far. They don't even Enjoy eat Enjoy the ride. Yeah. And then he comes back with, I seen all this new yeah. technology. And he starts writing, scribbling it down on a napkin. Well, you when know? I, when I they, they eat like all plant-based, I bet. I bet you they take a pill. That's it. Once a day type pill. It has all their stuff broken down. They don't even bother eating anymore. And Taco Bell. <laughs> Taco Bell. Not to get the shits oh, in the middle of the, of the galaxy. The um, um, <clears throat> I forgot. Fred shit that. all over the instrument panel. And like, we just went plaid. Oh shoot! What was my? Uh, I had I had a brilliant thing. Yeah, I don't even remember what it was. It was, must have been so brilliant I forgot about it. See, I'm only using like seven percent of my brain right now. But you know, a lot of the stuff that we're talking about, um, I've got a. So when I'm done with my Black Sabbath book. Um, I've already committed, and I told my wife, I'm like, I'm not writing anything. I'm done writing, because you just get so caught up in no, it. No, you got to write. This so, way, you won't have to think. You, Me yeah. and you got to get together. You got to write something that'll... So you know. I have a science fiction story, an all-ages science fiction story that I probably have about 60 pages done. I have the, the beginning, the middle, um, everything going on, but I didn't have an end. And the longer, the more that we start talking about doing the show and what we're talking about, all of a sudden, I'm like... Oh my God! I got my mi- I got my end. Oh, so perfect. as soon as I am done, a lot of the stuff that we've talked about, like aliens showing up, this is all in there. Like I hate to say it, I basically have been doing an advertising for the book that I have to go back and finish writing. Well, make Good. sure you put it's, it on audio book. Don't, don't apologize for that, it, dude. That's so part of funny. you. The whole thing about the the use of the brains. Yep. Um, you know, I've got. A, I don't even want to say anything. I'll tell you guys afterwards. But yeah. I, I've got like this whole thing about why we're only using ten percent of our brains or seven, whatever. Whatever it is. It is yeah. Um, and it's all alien based. Justin, look Dude, that up. That's awesome. How much of our brains do we and use? And like I said before, we <laughs> even went on air. Everything happens yeah. for a reason. I s- strongly believe in that. You know, and yeah. and that's not just positive stuff. That's like negative stuff too. Like there's there's, you know, my life have hasn't been all roses. There's been some times there where you're like really questioning. You're like, God, <laughs> are you alive? <laughs> like, am I gonna get out of this? You know. Ten percent, yeah. You know, but it's like it. Everything happens for a reason, and here it is. He's trying to finish up his book. Was kind of stuck a little bit, and now he's got all yeah. his his yeah. stuff to finish it up. And I do remember my great comment that I was going to make when I uh, go into a nursing home. I'm going to be doing heroin every day. <laughs> That's pretty much what I was going to say. But I wonder if, like, when you do these LSDs, these you know, all all these uh, psycho drugs, are you really connecting with something legit? Do you know what like, I mean? Is like, is it something like, "Oh, hey, you're not supposed to be here." Right? That yeah, kind of yeah. Like you have that would be awesome. Turn, you know, in the, turn in the that fourth would be dimension awesome. and go. Whoa! Yeah, and else at some point, like, well, he was know, just here. We've been talking so much about like technology and stuff. You know, I hate to say it, the Beatles were the worst people to talk about. The worst examples of don't do LSD. Yeah, right. <laughs> the worst. No, Pink Floyd, and I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although I don't, I, honestly, I don't think Pink Floyd was doing a lot of it. They definitely wrote a lot towards it. Yeah, but like yeah. you know. Sgt. Pepper, which is my least favorite Beatles album, and I'm yeah. sure that's going to... I mean, everybody knows that. I, I remember listening to the Beatles, but even, you know... I am such a yeah. diehard Beatles fan, but Sgt. Pepper was basically... The, all of them on LSD writing, recording, and listening, and getting all their influences. And when you look at that and think, like, see, you should be doing drugs, man, because they're going to ruin you. No, you Lucy just kind of made the that greatest Diamonds. album of all time that <laughs> every album ever is going to be judged against. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so I've always wondered that too. It's like, you know, you, you take your trip, you're you're somewhere else, and there's a bunch of dudes going, he shouldn't be here. This is like the knowledge room. Yeah. This is where all this cool stuff, he's not supposed to be here yet. Yeah. But that's how I kind of feel about like sleeping. Like, I really enjoy sleeping. Oh, I love sleeping. I really enjoy I sleeping. I took a nap earlier today. <laughs> Dude, so did <laughs> I. Loved so it. did I. My, my wife was at work, and I'm like, my daughter's in school remotely because, you know, a whole COVID thing. Yeah. So I'm banished to my room because my daughter needs to be in the front room in the living room with her laptops, you know, and all this crap. And I'm like, I'm watching uh, Dead Files, you know, ghost story stuff. All of a sudden, I wake up, and it's two hours later. I'm like. Oh, okay. I got two hours, so I got to be at Jeff's house. Awesome. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So we're both married to Amy Beth's, and yep. we both yep. took we naps together. We Not did. together. Not together, <laughs> but. Well, we could have. We, we could have. <laughs> could have been in the but same like plane. Naps, you know, you when, you're, when you're sleeping, like, I like, it, as bad as it is, I like when you wake up from those dreams, and you have, like, the full-on sweat, and you're like, oh, thank God that was a dream. Yeah. But are you tapping into another. Yeah. Another whatever you want to call it. Like, are you tapping into another dimension or whatever? Like, I mean, in our lives, the web didn't exist yeah. when we were first kids. Now right. it exists. Who knows <clears throat> how many other webs there are yeah. that you're linked to? What do they call those people that can, um, like, sit in a dark room and they project themselves into, like, Russia? Um, oh, Actual, yeah, that is yeah. so fascinating. Dude, the military took hold of yeah, that they in the did. 60s. And you know if they did that, that's because something... It was real. Yeah. It was real. <laughs> I watched a special about that where they actually tested somebody. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, this guy was right 80-something percent of the time, like in the high 80s. Yeah. And uh, well, even that woman that was blind that we, you were talking about... She was in there, she, too. Up the top, almost 90% correct yeah. with some of the stuff that she, w- she would say. Predicted long before. Yep. So it's we talk about all the... Like, I bel- I will listen to every single thing and like I don't like to me when you guys are talking about this I'm like that sounds so far fetched but it's like you know what I'd love to hear and read more about it and listen about it and see about it so I have a very open mind yeah. too. about a yeah, lot of too. that stuff there's oh. one thing in my life I do not have an open mind about Uh-oh. it is so bad ghosts oh I do not believe in ghosts there is no such thing as ghosts when you die you're gone you're out see you later goodbye so all these shows like you haven't met one yet no, but that's, I mean, that's the only difference. So all the things like every time I watch these shows where they're like, you know, they're ghost hunting and they're talking to a ghost. I sit there and I'm like, dude, you just BS. you have just got a show. I could do this. Yeah. Do you hear me, ghost? Oh, my God. What? No, it, please. But that's the only thing that yeah. I do not like. If you said, let's go to this haunted house and go find ghosts. I'm going to walk in there just to be like, there's no such thing. So yeah. do you believe in like the coincidence? Like I'll, I'll give you an example. So when my father died last year. Just right as he passed away, there's this big thunderstorm that came over the house. Boom, rocked the house. And he opened up his eyes. He was laying on his side. My mom was holding him, opened up his eyes, and that was it. So all of a sudden, because he, he, was, he was very much a Christian man, um, had Christian music playing on his Alexa. All of a oh, sudden, wow. his Alexa shuts off. Yep. Now, Justin, you were there. Shuts off. And then wheels on the bus go round and round, right? Which would have been something my father definitely would have... Played a joke played, with us. Yep. Starts going on, right? And my mom starts laughing. like, and I'm, and I'm like, what are you laughing about? Like, my dad just died. And she's like, I asked him to give me a sign. I begged him to give me a sign when he got to heaven that he was okay. And that's just... I was on the bus. Right? Yeah. So I, I look at that, and we tried to debunk that, remember? We were... Well, he was still there, so we, the, the funeral parlor said they couldn't pick him up for a few hours. So I said, you know, we're going to debunk that thing. Because that's how I am. That's how my mind yeah. works. I yeah, yeah, it. yeah. Me too. Not only could we not get this thing to play that particular version. First of all, we because you know you can go back and tell it play a previous song. Yeah. It went back to the Christian music it was playing. Oh, wow. Right? <laughs> Honest to God. And then once we finally got it to play Wheels on the Bus, it played a different version. Um, and then my mom was telling me that weeks down the road, she was sitting in her living room. And that same Popped version on. came on. Alexa, and it wasn't even on. Yeah. So, and that stuff, I absolutely and that's, believe that's in. That's the yeah, EMP. I absolutely but, believe in. But that. how do you not believe in ghosts then? So, because that's the EMP, the same. So my thought is, is you know, obviously I believe in heaven. Yeah. So if you are gone and going, if you're going and you're in heaven, 
you heaven is supposed to be the perfect place. You do not want to know what's going on down here. You do not want to know I the agree. suffering. I so agree. I agree 1,000%. Spirit is up and, and gone. And, but on your way, things like that, I believe, like, I, God works in a, in a in mysterious, it's, it's so coincident, you know, that's the catchphrase, but there's so many weird things that happen, and you can't look at it but go, oh, that's definitely God. Dude, yeah. Yeah. If, you know? if you've ever had an experience where you're like, that's God, you know, it's one of those things that when you have that experience, it changes you instantly. Like, yeah. I remember I was I was seven years old or just shy of being seven, and I was electrocuted. I had a necklace on, and I crawled under a desk, and my medallion, which was uh, Mother Mary holding baby Jesus, yeah. hung into a surge protector, one of the metal ones from the oh, wow. 80s, yeah. and electricity went up it. And I remember the doctor at the ER saying to both my mom and my father, who weren't together at the time, I don't know why your son's alive. He should have been dead. The amount of current that went through should have stopped his heart. And it's like, I'm I'm a firm believer that God or something Mm -hmm. saved me that day. And I feel like my whole life, here I am 33 years later, trying to figure out what the hell did he save me for? Like, I, I love my daughter. I love my yeah. wife. I'm happy with what I've done with my life, mm-hmm. my career, everything. I'm happy. I'm at a good spot. But I feel like, wait, why me? Like, what did what did I get saved for? And I have, I've got you one know? of those, <clears throat> one of the, where we live. So, I mean, people are li- listening to this or watching this and, you know, they're all over the place. But not that far from here in Hamden, which is like, what, three towns down from yeah, us? Yeah, from here. Uh, oh. Mercury Swim Studios. I don't know if you know about Mercury Swim Studios. No. It, it's a place in Hamden where, you know, you learned to swim as a kid. It was open during the winter time, so oh, no you got to go swim during the winter. And I remember probably going there, and it was like you sign up for swimming lessons, but I was a really good swimmer. I just I wanted went to, to swim. the Y. Yeah, so I just wanted to swim in the winter. I wanted yep. to feel what it was like to be rich. So. Yeah. We, we would go there, but I remember diving into the pool and diving straight headlong into a shallow end. And at the last minute, I, I realized I was going to conk my head and kind of straighten, you know, flattened yeah, out a little that bit. Last little... Rip my nose, like yeah, scrape yeah, my nose, yeah, scrape yeah. my chest all up. And honestly, every there hasn't been a time. It must go every at least once a week. I think about I actually hit my head. Once I, a week, your whole life week, still? Once really? Once a week, I've been th- I think about this, that wow. I hit my head and that this is all a dream. Wow. And wow. that I am trapped in a body that I can't control. So this is just a manifestation of a dream of, like, this is what's going on in my head. So, And I'm, I, I wonder, not to interrupt you, I wonder if that's because you've been so successful in your life with the music and with the podcasts and stuff like that, that you're kind of like... Pinch me, is this a dream? It's, I've had this since it happened. Like, I, you know, yeah. I, yeah, and I meet anytime I've ever seen anybody. Like, my mother is a, um, she's a psych nurse, and she worked a lot in group homes. So anytime I would go to I visit her at work, mother. I would go there. <laughs> oh, yeah, she, yeah. She's looking at you, and she just goes like this. Try she goes like that. She's like, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know this guy. Yeah, it's nuts. Um, <laughs> It was a fun life. It wasn't an easy life. <laughs> um, but there, Shout you know, out to mom. Yeah, yeah. Anytime that I would see somebody that, you know, basically is, is, is brain dead, yeah. my thought is, is that what they're thinking? Are they living a whole life Dude. within this shell? And I'm doing this in my, in my life. It's, Honestly, if I'm, it's if I'm brain dead, like, I hope, like you said, I'm living that alternate reality. But if not, pull a plug. Because yeah. I don't want my wife, I don't want my daughter, I don't want my mother, I don't want my dad, I don't want my brother to have to like worry about when I'm gonna die yeah. because I can't even yep. breathe air on my own. You know what I mean? I'm I'm such a proud person, and I have been my whole life that I think that would be my Achilles heel. Yeah, yeah. I really do. Yeah, well, like I I had a high school friend of ours that um <clears throat> was on a ventilator for 80 days with, with covid and guy's an absolute warrior i mean his name is uh rich davio hopefully one one day um i'm gonna reach out to him to come in here nice awesome um, he's absolute warrior I, and i and i talked about it in one of my previous podcasts that the day they had him get up and walk for the first time mm-hmm. he 
you know, obviously was very emotional. Um, I actually started crying watching this. Of course. And his course. the look on his face was just determination. A mission. I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna walk. And she said like, to him, yeah. you know, do you want to sit down? And he goes, Nope. No. And he, he was like straight ahead and, and let's go. I wonder what and this is something I'd love to ask him, what what went through his head when he was yeah. in on a, on a ventilator? Did he have dreams? Did he you know um I bet you like 75 percent of the time it's just your last memory is before you went unconscious and your next memory is when you wake up yeah i hope like so i had surgery for the second time last year um to remove my kidney stones so i have severe sleep apnea without my sleep apnea machine i'll probably expire <laughs> and uh, that's always a fear like you know you and william shatner <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pro- I need probably to me too but i refuse to i use this product i refuse to take the sleep analysis Damn it, Jim. it's the best thing i ever did <laughs> so when they went to go put me under you know I, I remember they called me like three times in a row and they're like talking about my sleep apnea and i'm like yeah. listen i've been put under a bunch of times why why are you so worried about this now well come to find out Every it time, been, it's a further risk. Well, that, and they, they should have actually been doing this, my previous surgeries, no. come to find out. And no, they didn't know. Yeah. So here comes the day for surgery, and this kid comes out, a young kid, and uh, he goes, uh, all right, I'm going to be honest with you, man. He goes, I'm going to give you some barbiturates to put you to sleep, and they are going to cause you night terrors yeah. that you are not going to wake up from until we wake you up. Uh, and I'm like, he goes, so... Strap in. I don't like go. to give these, but I can't, you know, obviously you're I have a high to. risk. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I remember laying on the table, and, they, and the nurse comes over, and she's like, hey, we do this exercise where we picture you, you picture yourself on a, you know, wherever you want to be, the uh, river or lake or in a meadow or wherever. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In a hospital yeah. journey. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, you know, lady, I'm good. I go, let's just get this over with, man, because the faster I get this done, the faster yeah. I get to go home. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get to go back to reality. And I remember her holding my hand, and she's like, no, I'm dead serious. Like, Three, two, one. I ha- we have people who wake up that come like five feet off the bed. Uh. And this will affect them for a few weeks. And I go, I go, oh, all right, let's do it. And she starts doing the, you know, you're in a meadow. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, th- that, that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, my yeah. health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he puts the thing over my mouth, and he's like, and I'm breathing. And I have, like, when I get a... Uh, a Novocaine shot, it doesn't work. Yeah, I'm the same way. Yeah, yeah and me too. I they always, feel it. They're always like, you know, I just gave you so much, you know, and this will knock out an elephant. And, yeah, And no. I'm still sitting here going, Try yep. again. <laughs> <laughs> so he puts the mask over me, and sure enough, I, uh, I'm i not going out. And we're, we're starting to play a game because he had asked me, how long do you think it's going to take you to go did out? They, they, did they do the 10-9 and you're back at 1 and you're like, yeah, okay, well, he started dude, me off at fail. A, he started me off at 100, right? Yeah. And – uh so they, they obviously have to go through the plumbing to do this, do yeah. this surgery, and uh, uh-huh. so I, I'm at like 94 or something like that. And he he's like, Jeff, you got to start breathing. <laughs> like breathing he wants, deep. And he I, wants I, you to take those drugs. And in. I'm like, <laughs> like trying to suck into, and I'm laughing. He's laughing, and and, and I go, so just for jokes, I go, I'm a grower, not a shower. I'm out, right? Yeah. But I remember as clear as day. I literally closed my eyes. Like I, I've been out so many times that I know the feeling just before you go out. Yeah. And that three second yeah. before you're like, where okay. all sound goes. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. It does. And next thing you know, I'm in a park, right? Literally, it was like a split second. I'm in a park, and I remember the heat from the sun, and I was with my dad. Oh and, shit! But you know, it's funny because we, we talk about ghosts and everything, but every dream I've had of him. He n- never speaks. I've never had a dream of my father. Really? I buried him when he was 60 years old. I was 32. I've had dreams of my grandfather, my aunt, my father. Never. Wow. wow. Never. And I, I wear, you know, this was his ring. Yeah, he I wore too. it for 30 right years. <laughs> you know, I wear it. Yeah. You know? and, and we were, he was holding my hand, which is something he never would have done. Right? Yeah, he was a jokester, you know yeah. that kind of thing. He would hug me, but my, my we, father we, we would was, never hold hands. Stand in the corner, don't <laughs> cry. <I> don't <laughs> and, and we held hands and we walked down this this path and up and down we went. And there was a pond right there, and it was a bench. And I just remember him. He kind of guided me to the bench, and we sat down. And he just like he always does, and he just gave you that stare. No, not not at me anymore. Now he's straight ahead. Past like you. all the other dreams I've had him, where I see him, and he's just looking ahead. It doesn't seem uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. He just doesn't realize I'm there, you know? Yeah. And 
next thing I wake up and I'm crying like you wouldn't believe. Dude, All isn't it amazing when you crying. wake up and your your tears? You knew you were crying for like ten minutes. <laughs> and like, the nurse you know? is like, "Are you okay? I I I told you it was gonna be. I'm like, it wasn't." Anywhere near what you thought it was going to be. It was positive, not negative. I yeah. said, I just literally hung out with my dad. Yeah. So it's kind of, like I said, it's fascinating to think that some kind of drug like that can get you. Uh, maybe maybe, maybe Dude, I did have that connection. You know, I, look, I'd like to think I did. Look at Total Recall. Right. Totally far-fetched, yeah. way advanced, but who knows? Maybe they hit the nail on the head, and you did actually have that time with your father. Yeah, like bonus. And I bonus. Time. I do not doubt that that happened either. Yeah, I mean that. Me neither. Yeah, you know that's why you know that's a hundred percent from the heart. Yeah. Like yeah, you know? that's why I'm just like I'm fascinated with that stuff. And how do we know that these um, aliens didn't tap into something like that where Already. they could open that thousands up. of years exactly. ago? Exactly. And you know, tripping on acid like it, they're everyday thing. It doesn't thing. always have to be about <laughs> anal probing, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, whoa. that was always the big thing. Whoa, 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 yeah, whoa. that was a big thing. There, there was, there was only one <laughs> anal probing, and that was when you were like dehydrated and you passed out, and you were like, "All right, you're getting a silver bullet, dude. We gotta see what your core temperature is." <laughs> that was. Uh, <laughs> is that what they call it? The silver bullet. Silver bullet. That's what we called it. If, that was when um, we were in the sand. Yep. If you were dehydrated and you dropped and you went down. You were getting a silver bullet. <laughs> I can honestly say I drank enough water. I never got the silver bullet. <laughs> I got the and, and that was that was always the thing that people always said. You know, oh, I was abducted and, and I was anally probed. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. always the big yeah. thing. And it's like, why? Yeah. Can't it, they get the information somewhere else? Because those are those are just a story that they heard from somebody else. Yeah, like when you, I mean. Not to my knowledge, I've never had any interaction with aliens and stuff like that. But from what I hear, and I watch kind of a lot of that type of stuff because it fascinates the shit out of me. Because I like the type of stuff where the aliens are abducting them or the ghosts are in the house or the spirits are in there telling them that they need to do this because X, Y, and Z, and then all of a sudden their life is glorious. Like, I'm the one that, I'm open to everything. Like, I really am. I do believe in a God, and I do believe in Satan. I mean, there's, you know, uh, so many different realms that that shit exists. And it's like, when you've been in different examples of your life, and you've seen the positive, and you've seen the negative, it really makes you believe this stuff. And I love hearing the stories about you spending the time with your father. And I love hearing the stories about you with the Star Wars, that it brings you in a different different elements of your life mm. you know yeah you know that's one of the reasons why i started this podcast and I, I say it all the time but it's true like conversations like this spark your book yeah. you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah. Uh, that's awesome we, we, yeah. we, we get to geek out for a little while and have yeah. those conversations that and you, you know you know we completely skipped over one of the greatest alien movies of all time they live Oh. oh, Rowdy Rowdy Piper. One of yeah, the Rowdy Rowdy, Rowdy Piper. <laughs> I will say one of the greatest Propaganda. guys I ever Propaganda. met. Rowdy Rowdy Piper. You met him twice, oh. and he was. Oh. The most, I blew off a wedding to go the first Why time I ever you? met him. Why wouldn't you? And um, yeah, I was like, I'm trying to explain that one to my wife when it was going on. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Like, it's Rowdy Rowdy Piper, and she's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, but this is blah blah But it's getting, Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Of course, like six months later. So, <laughs> oh wow, um, it didn't matter. But I still have that memory. Yeah. And then I ended up seeing him a little bit later, but he was the most down to earth, nicest guy. Any t- uh, anytime you ever got to meet the old school wrestlers, they were down to earth. They're so down they to earned earth it. because they they earned their it. Their life is based on getting a reaction from somebody. Yeah. Right. So like my mother met Roddy Roddy Piper way before I did, and my dad was there fuming when she met him. He's like, I don't like this guy. This guy's such a jerk. And yeah. so my mother and my mother, and then she met him and see, he was a sweetheart. He came to see he <laughs> came know? to see a bunch of the patients that my mother had. Yeah. And my mother was like, I can't believe that you knew how to, you know, react to these kids. Because and, that was a character that he was. And playing. that's exactly what happened. Yeah. So he my oh. mother said, and my dad said they're fuming, going, I don't care what he does, a stupid jerk. <laughs> Dumb kill. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Dumb kill. My my <laughs> mother said, you know, you're such a nice guy. And uh, here my son used to dress up like he'd get a, a beach towel in his hot yeah, rod shirt. Yeah, of course. Who did and it? And buy the shirt <laughs> Who did and all it? that stuff. And Hulk Hogan yeah. with the... And my, and my mother... <laughs> and my mother's like, why weren't you just a nice guy? And, she, and he goes, well, if I was the nice guy, I he never would have bought the shirt. I wouldn't have gotten and paid. And all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And when I told him that story, he got all emotional. I bet. He, but I he bet. Just, great guy. 
But man, that movie when it came out, it I remember it flopped in the theater. It uh, did. Um, and then it got this whole other life afterwards when it uh, went on cable. Yep. But when you watch that movie, it is like to me, that's as close to the way that I really feel the an alien interaction would sure. be. Yeah. I'd like yeah, to think absolutely. it's gonna be like close encounters. Yeah. Where, hey, here's all your people back. Yeah. They're fine. Uh, Their lives are a little screwed up because they're yeah. 30, 40 years later. <laughs> past. <laughs> but, past. Yeah. You know, that's kind of what I like and want, but yeah. I really feel it's gonna be more of a they live. And you know, it's like a lot of the people that I know um in my little circle, we're all thinking this whole political circus is nothing but they live sure yeah. the sequel. Well the propaganda uh, is uh is insane. Yeah. Um, like with the Warriors, um, I hated the Warriors when it first came out, and then uh, are we talking about Road Warriors? Am I missing? Oh things? no, no, the, the 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 gang movie from like 1980. But when the Warriors came out, I didn't like it because it was just a gang movie. I was like, oh, this is kind of okay. It's kind of cool. But then you find out that the director saw it as this is supposed to be a dystopian future, like 30 years from now. So this is the future, and I'm like, oh my god, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's funny, and like I said in the very beginning, I swear that movies are released to get into your psyche to be able to accept the like future. just to be ready for it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <clears throat> like you know, uh, Dark Knight. That Dark was a, Knight. That, that was, was a great flick. Yeah, man. that was. That was and the Joker one. Yeah, yeah. I do not like that one. Oh no, the Dark that Knight. Was, that yeah, was that was that was that yeah, was that the, the Joker one. one. That was the one that I those people. Like that really. Yep. Those people, what I didn't like about that is that people lost their lives to replicate that same scene down the stairs. They were in New York City, yeah, and they literally threw themselves down the stairs. And I think it was one or two people that actually lost their life really? from that scene. Yeah, I just did not. I didn't like that movie. I, I'm like the one. Like, people look at that. I have a friend who's a big into cinema, and he's, he's a, you know, wants to direct and write and do all that good for him but he talks about the two movies that were the most important movies in his life it's pulp fiction and that one and oh, i'm like pulp fiction i don't like either one of them I, i'm not a quentin tarantino guy at dark all. Oh, really? dark I, night I the only thing about that is the fact that heath ledger actually died halfway through the filming of that video and here's somebody who's a mega superstar who has everything handed? Not, I don't want to say handed to them because he did probably earn what he had, but it's like, and it was publicized about his death. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like it, it's kind of a crazy, surreal thing that you're like, no, take the actor out of it. Yeah, this is a real yeah. Yeah. life that was lost. You know, and yeah. all they wanted to do was make stories about it. You know. It kind of makes you wonder, like the whole aliens thing. It's like, where we already visited. Are we? Is everything in our short history influenced by something that we back engineered? Well, I mean, <clears throat> I wonder if we ever, like, especially in Egypt, we dug something up, you know, and then oh, look at the this holy grail saucer. Yeah. And, oh my god, this is a hood <laughs> ornament. <laughs> but did we understand it? No, you, you know, know what I mean. Like that's the thing. You listen to Bob Lazar talk about. Some of the things that he saw, and it's it's absolutely fascinating. It is. You know what I mean? Do you guys ever think we were really on the moon? That's a great one because I tend – oh, you know what? I got my other dumb story about the moon. But I tend to – I want to believe. Me too. I believe – 12 percent of it not. now. I believed 100 percent when I was a kid. And then after being in the Mojave Desert and then being over in the Red Sea and uh, whatever – Seeing different elements of deserts, I don't know. It could be faked. Do you remember Capricorn One? Yeah, where they I don't. Fa- they uh, so basically, was it Mars? Yep. They faked a Mars landing because they couldn't get up there. Oh, really? And then they were like watching the ship come back, and then the ship explodes in reentry. So now they're like, "Oh, hey, astronauts!" And it was O.J. Simpson, uh, James Brolin, and yep. somebody yep. else. Oh, Jesus! It's like so. You three no longer exist anymore. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was yeah. them trying to escape. Yeah. Um, but my moon story was as a kid, I used to think that we went to the moon every day. <laughs> because my dad went to work every day. Yeah. My friends' dads all went to work every day. So I just assumed an astronaut went to the moon every day. I oh, so that's I funny. I remember freaking out one time going, Why is this one on TV? Like what you know, when what, they used to what makes them, this special? What's what's the big yeah. deal? Or did I miss uh. like five hundred other ones? Yeah. <laughs> and I remember saying something to my dad and he's like, Do you know how much money it costs? It costs 
thousands of dollars to go to the moon. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> back yeah. Back then, it probably did. Back then, back then, yeah. Yeah, I don't think we were ever there, to tell you the really? truth. I don't think we were ever there. Because the, the later I get in my life, I would have to agree with you, Jeff. I don't know, or were we there, and we got the warning, like, knock, knock, get out of here, and don't come back. That's kind of what I, you know. This is where my, my story, yep. that's the main part of my story is, so we better have been there, or I got no story. Yeah. Go ahead, what's your story? The, the the one about my book that oh, I, yeah. the the, okay, yeah. the sci-fi book I'm writing has a lot to do with the moon landing. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, yeah. And then what you just said, it's like okay, you know what I mean. This is this book now is now writing itself as I'm. I mean, so you talk about going to the moon every day, like you thought. You would think that's what we'd be doing. Yeah. It being so close Dude, to us. I'm telling you, we haven't been at what, what was it? I know, Sixty. Yeah. When's the last time we were yeah, there? So it makes you nine. Makes you wonder. Seven. When was it? You know it? what I mean? And. 69 was the first moon landing, and it makes you wonder. It's like, were we tapped on the shoulder like, okay, go home. Yeah. You, you know, and we haven't been back since. Yeah. Like, there was a Simpsons episode where they were watching one of those old, you know, because when they are showing the kids, like, the movies, and it was all those old, horrible movies we watched as kids. Yeah. The black and white ones that would skip. And yeah, 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 yeah. But there was one where they what were was watching. The, what was the chick uh, that would come out on Halloween? Elvira. Yeah. Elvira yeah. would come out every Halloween and have, like, a 24-hour marathon running of, you know, the old black and whites. And this uh, this Simpsons one was a little thing where they are watching it, and it was uh, talking about the moon landing, um, but written – but it was supposed to be like from the, the 60s. And then they, they showed uh, Armstrong on the moon holding the flag. And then the narrator said, the moon belongs to America. And it always <laughs> will remain. <to> America. <laughs> I mean, we're fascinated with Mars for whatever reason. Mars, is, said, I think it's because it's the closest there. one. Like, I don't know if that's so why. Isn't the moon closer than Mars? Well, clo- the moon's, well, the moon's closer. closer, but, closer but Mars but is a planet. Yeah. So it would be like the first person to a planet. But even still, it's like three thousand light years away or something like that right i just don't understand how fact check on on mars three yeah Yeah, it's it's crazy i don't understand how we can communicate with a rover but i can't get my goddamn cell phone to work (laughs) in west warren yeah you know what i mean like (laughs) tell me how that works my gps to your house five minutes away right showed me i would be here at seven o'clock yeah Yeah. so yeah, something's yeah, I, I, we need to go to Mars now to fix this. I had to do the GPS too, and it was actually surprisingly it was thirty five minutes, and I'm like, oh, okay, closer than camp. All right. <laughs> so Mars, by the way, is thirty nine point uh, three three four million miles away. Thirty nine point wow. three million. So what is that in light years? Oh, oh, math. A hundred oh. for the light years, yep. right? So I, I just know it takes a long time. <laughs> All I know is in Planet of the Apes, it was Hasline's theory of time and space that yep. got them on that planet. Yeah, and I, I think honestly, like they just literally cracked the code. Like I mentioned earlier, I think when we do time travel, it's instantaneous because we've figured out that. But I don't think we're gonna see that in our generation. I don't know. Well, we've seen some really crazy shit since we've been on. Yeah, you know. Yeah. It's a good possibility. Look at the fusion. The, All we need the is a fusion star- conductor. We need a Stargate. Uh, yep, that's what we need. Yep. You know, another movie I didn't like as a kid. Oh, you didn't like that? I, I don't know what it, it was. What about just... Starship Troopers? <laughs> See, I loved that one. So I loved that, that one. Those Come movies on. are yeah. Yeah. horrible, but they're guilty pleasure. They like, are. Every time they're on, I'm watching. I'm like, you have to watch it. Again? Yeah. You have to watch it. That's like a classic. And it's it's so funny watching that as what it was is basically Nazism. And you know, I, think, that was, I think that was it, like 99, 2000, yeah. 2001. It's a relatively new movie, yeah. you yep. know? Yeah, that was uh, Stargate. I was amazed by that. And more because I like the Egyptian time, too. Yep. So that kind of encompassed everything for me. Um, what was that in light years? I didn't really say. It didn't say? It was so close that they were measuring light years. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, uh, can you imagine being the guy that, you know, gets up in the morning, goes to NASA, Gets to steer this thing, and, and at, what if he's actually tracking something? Yeah, yeah. Like imagine, I wouldn't be able to sleep for a year. You know, I, know I, full well. I want to be the guy that goes to an island and wakes up and is like, "Hey, babe, we got three foot swells today." That's what <laughs> I. That's the guy I want to be. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to deal with that. any of this type of stuff. I want to like be on an island where it's eighty five degrees year round and just chill and go pick my fruit. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how? You can't go anywhere without seeing somebody wearing something NASA. Right. 
right? It is, Nowadays. It's so far. And I don't know if NASA is making any money off of this. Shame on them if they didn't. Yep. You know, my degrees in marketing, they blew it big time. Yeah. Hopefully, somebody there, like Bob NASA, head of NASA, is making some money off of this because everywhere you go, I mean, you can't it's a go NASA show. anywhere. Even even on like the TikTok stuff, my friends watch it and they're like, you know, he shows me one. I'm like, dude, that's a NASA shirt. Yeah. You know, a commercial, NASA shirt, some political thing, NASA shirt. Walmart, like, NASA yeah. shirt. Yeah. You know, it's kind of insane. Now, what about contact? Don't remember that one. I Contact was a good one. I Jody remember Foster. that one. Jody Foster. Yeah. I don't remember that one. Yeah, so they get a signal. Yeah. And uh they try and track it down. Yep. So it, it's coded. So they start doing the code and find out it's uh they're building a machine to get them to go back. Yeah. And uh it took a little while. Like it was a little bit long in the beginning. It was. But then it got to a point where it was like it went really fast and it was just become absolutely fascinating. I think that's a good possibility of what it might be like that first contact where let's say you know that that's how they get back and forth and, and the only thing about contact is didn't they have the the bodies down below that were in the uh the cryogenic frozen labs no no that so wasn't contact what was the one that she, had those remember she sat in that thing in, in the I forget what they call that thing but it was like woo, 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 woo. And then boom, it shot her into another dimension. Oh yeah, and yeah. She went through yeah. this like wormhole out to the other side. And what they did was they actually used her father, who had pa- I believe he had passed, um, as a safe way to communicate with her, and uh, to let her know that this was the first step, and that they would be co- um, things coming down the line. See, I feel like I, like I said earlier, my biggest fear is that I'm going to be tricked. <laughs> like it's like I'm thinking it's my father and it's not really my father. And then it's the some door alien closes behind. Type, oh, I'm gonna eat your spine. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? oh. Yeah, that was a good flick too. I mean, I was uh, and it was the whole religion played into that movie yep. too, where um, the government had the priest and, and he was involved in that. And oh, that's right. There was yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. There was that tug of war between, oh. um, you know, um, religion and, and science. So, and that's that's ongoing for all of our lifetime and thousand years before is the fact of religion versus science. And like you touched on it earlier, why can't it be both? Yeah, you can have Why both. does it have to be separate? Why can't we take the best out of both and move forward? You know, and so many people want to be divided on the subject. It's like, no, let's just take both, take the best out of both and move forward. Oh yeah, I mean the whole religion thing has been fought over. How many wars do we fight over religion? You know, in the Catholic Church is one of the biggest um, factors. I don't know of what everything. to use anymore. Powerhouses yeah. yeah. looking you know? down, going, "I didn't want this." <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, just, you yeah. weren't supposed to be tax free. Yeah. <laughs> the um, Independence Day was yep. such, so corny but such a good movie it was two movies in one it, it was, was like the first the first hour before like the aliens like with the countdown yeah yeah that was awesome and then it turned into star wars yeah yeah, yeah. um it was such a corny movie but it was it was good for its time yeah you know and the effects in that one were like i remember being blown away by how real everything looked because that that was right when we started getting Jurassic Park. Yeah, that was the, um, the late Terminator 90s. Two, yeah. Where everything yeah. just looked completely just real. Yeah. yeah. I wonder how much these intelligent life forms are going to use AI. Like, I wonder what to what level AI they use AI. Is, I think you we've know? already skipped the bar on AI. I think AI can already surpass us. And we've reached that point. I mean, we got self driving cars, we got self driving trucks. We got, you know, you walk into your house, you walk in your room, and you say, Alexa. Like, I, I really feel like everything, how, how often is it? You're talking, you're having yeah. a conversation, yeah. the three of you, in the, the three of us in the middle of the woods, no recording devices, oh, wait a minute, except for our phones. And then the next day, whatever we we're talking about, you get an advertisement for it. <laughs> yeah, we tried doing that at work one you time. Know? That's actually called the government. We were yeah. walking around <laughs> with our cell phones out talking about how we, we wanted to buy bicycles. Yeah, and the and next we, day you're getting bike but ads. we didn't get them. Yeah. We were it? so bent out of shape, but we mentioned something about wanting pizza. Yeah, we got a lot of those. Yeah, yeah. 
Like we'd have our phones. It's out crazy. Going, Boy, I'd really love a twelve speed bike right about now. But yeah, when a twelve it, speed bike would be great. And but it, when it's yeah. in your pocket and you're say, oh man, Domino's just came out with that double cheeseburger pizza. I want to try it. Next day, there's an ad for it. Dollar off coupon. Yeah. Like you know? there was a video ju- that just came out on YouTube where, you know, I, I don't know what the name of the company is, but I think it might be Massachusetts based company. Built that dog. It's that yellow tank looking thing. I yeah. The name of it. It's got the. So they show this thing walking down the street, and it, it acknowledges this car pulls up next to him, and it checks it out, and then it keeps walking. Oh wow! Because it's but, no threat. Yeah, but they show they they sh- I've seen videos of this thing in the past, where now they're they're shrinking this thing down a little bit because it was big at first, right? Yeah. Freaks just people like out. our computers. But if you make it cute like a puppy dog, it does. That's how you get them. Yeah, yeah. Afraid of it. throw some ears on it, and then yeah. you know, next thing you know. Oh, come here, puppy. And, and Dude, it I remember, your eyes out. <laughs> I remember even as, you know, as short a time back as, you know, the 2000s when I was in the Marine Corps and stuff, and we had dogs, and we had real dogs. Like, it's crazy to think how far the technology has come in such a short amount of time. Look at uh, Apple. Was it Apple that had the first half human robot yeah. thing that when you would walk in the stores, they would greet you and this and that. And everybody's like, oh, oh, awesome. No, I don't want that thing thinking on its yeah. own. I mean, I, I, I don't w- want it. I work for Amazon, and I worked for Amazon before Alexa was out. Yeah. Right. So I remember that. I remember when it, yeah. it started to, it's like, oh, they're going to have this thing that can flip on your lights. I'm like, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> it does. <laughs> Sorry, Uncle Jeff. You're absolutely right. Yeah. That's why I, that's why I have my little world, and there's everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I can't say where I work for, but where I work for is in tandem with your company. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like it's one of those things that you just see these things come all across the table. Yeah. And you're like, no way. And then three years later, it's like, where were you? Why'd you miss the boat? We we watched a lot of video a couple of years ago. My building that I was in before um, was getting retrofitted. So we had a couple months downtime. So we didn't want to lay anybody off. So we would Bring everybody would still come in, so Training we would kind of do some stuff. So we found some videos um, where Jeff Bezos says he's big into space and space exploration. Like, you know, if you want to figure out or know where a lot of his money is, probably his personal. Like, he probably spends so much money of his own on the space stuff that he, yeah, yeah, he yeah. loves it. And I, I think it's Blue Horizon. It's a rocket that goes up and comes back down and lands. And you want to see something completely sci-fi, completely creepy and freaky because, you know, the whole thought is we send a rocket up and half of it ends up burning up and yeah. you lose the, 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 the gas part of it. Yeah. You see the, the main part of it coming down and then you see wings self come out, landing and it self lands yeah. right on a pad where they want it. Look to. at, look at Tesla. <sighs> look at them. And look at the, uh, Richard Branson. Yeah. Everybody thought he was going to be the top notch. Nope. Elon Musk blew him out of the water. Hands yep. down. Yep. And it's like, you know, if we want to talk about <clears throat> crazy smart guys like Elon Musk, like I wish I put 20 grand into him 10 years yeah. ago. Because you'd be a multimillionaire, yeah. and you'd never have to work again. You'd be able to do your own thing, and you'd be able to do your podcast and not have to worry. And, can you, can you track that car that he launched into space? The what? So Elon I don't Musk think so. launched the car. He, he did? Yeah. It was like a Cadillac or something? Yeah. It was some kind of, oh, maybe it was a Tesla he put out there. Great. Just littering space now. That's what we're doing? Yeah. Well, we have space junk. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. He, he literally <laughs> launched it out there. It's, it's out there. Yeah. Um, hey, the Empire does it, and the Empire strikes back. Well, right? zero gravity. He moves to hyperspace. <laughs> it's zero gravity, so we'll garbage. just keep going. We've so we gone can... plaid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Text, yeah, yeah, Tesla, Tesla Roadster, Roadster. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's I mean, right. can you imagine me being an alien driving by and whoa, oh, what was Jesus. that? Yeah, <laughs> like, use a minute. signal wrong <laughs> side of the road, buddy. <laughs> that wasn't a missile. What was that? <laughs> Somebody littering again. Uh, th- this, this is just the thought of uh, like you know we talk about the robot dog that I I just talked about. Can you imagine if one lands, starts throwing out thousands of those things to come after you? No, you're toast. That, oh, that, you're toast. That terrifies you're me. You're toast. <laughs> At that point, you're hoping for a massive <laughs> EMP. You're hoping for a massive EMP strike, so this way everything electronical gets blown out. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, with the Pentagon coming out with all these things, and now they're kind of being a little more free with their... Uh, yeah, 60 years later. What's next? <laughs> like, so, okay, so you told us now. What's the next step? They're like, not going to tell you. They're, gonna, they're doing it in 60-year increments. So by the time they release this stuff, 
it's null and void anyways. But, That's why they do that. But is somebody sitting there going, let's screw these guys? Yeah. That's what I think a lot of that is. I honestly feel like, um, you know, some guy, you know, some general high at the Pentagon had to bring his kid to work. Yeah. And his wife made him <laughs> give him a job. <laughs> so he's downstairs now just typing up stuff. And they're like, what'd you come up with? Uh, how about that aliens landed right before World War II and gave us the atomic bomb? Yes. Sounds good. Play Run that it. One. Run yeah. it. So the kid's sitting there typing it up. <laughs> okay, get the paper, dirty it up a little bit, make it look old. Yep. There's um, no way to know. Yeah, stuff like that. Like, that's where I think a lot of that, unfortunately, like, it, you know, I, I used to really have a lot of faith in our government when I was probably 10. <laughs> yeah. But it seems like now it's just like, let's just screw with a bunch of sheep. Let's see what we can do. That's yeah. all the American public is, is a bunch of sheep. Yeah. We really are. Yep. And the, the, the sooner you realize that and kind of live your own flock. That's, that's exactly. Is the better you yep. are. Yeah. Hello? My problem is years ago when I went down the rabbit hole and I started to be more political and understand how things worked and stuff like that, I got really angry. Like, of course. Yeah. I, how could you not? Yeah. I, and I wish I wanted to go back to butterflies and lollipops. Yeah, I was happier. Like my biggest worry was like, what, where, what TV show am I gonna watch on Friday night yeah. with my wife? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like th- yeah. that, that was it. And but that's how they want the American public to be. Is oh, look at the Wonder Years. Watch the Wonder yeah. Years tonight because that's the perfect American story and everything else. And it's like when you start to veer off and go down the rabbit hole, like you called it, you start to see different things, and your your brain starts wondering, and you're like. Am I really a sheep? And the first thing aliens are going to say when they show up, and they're going to go, two-party system? Really? <laughs> this is what you guys came up with? All these years, and this is where you guys are at. We hit the watching, reset button. We've been watching this 200 years. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how do we know that? Like, Let's say all those years ago, they just hit the reset button. You know, nuke us all, and yeah. then we, st- we started over. Started over right, again. Th- they didn't get this right. We're going to yeah. reset We're gonna them try again. again. And then, you know, yeah. how many times have we tried to reset, you know what I mean, before we get it right? And yeah. Then, you know... What are we good for? 85 years yeah. as We're lucky. white American males? 85 years, I think that's our life expectancy. That's, I'd be happy with that. I want out at 60. No. I, I, I don't want to be around. I would, you know. Get, Dude, I put, my, I put my father in the ground at 60. You don't want out at 60. Yeah, just pillow on the face. I'm done. <laughs> I'm out. I'll I w- sign a I was, note, I was I'll 32. Sign a note gets my wife off, out of trouble. I was 32. We well, just got to go to Sweden. They let you... Uh, my they, daughter they was the, five uh, at the death. time, and yeah. I, I couldn't even bring her because she was – that was the first real death. Yeah. Like, that was her grampy. You know what I mean? I want a solid 85 where at least my grandkids are, like, in their 20s. You don't you know? want anybody to uh, cryogenically freeze your head no. for, like, a million I'm years? No, I'm good. Nope. Nope. Poor Ted Williams. He, didn't, <laughs> he only got, like, five years. Burn me. <laughs> that was Let, rough. Get me, get me cream, cremated. Send me out across the ocean or a lake or something, and this way I know I'm done. I don't want to come man. back. Demolition Man? Yep. Where they, they froze uh, Sylvester and yep. Wesley Snipes? Yeah. Great. Yep. And, and there was all Taco John Bells. Spartan. John Spartan. <laughs> yep. He doesn't know the shells. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've been given two demerits. Yeah. That was a good flick, too. Yeah. That was. Yeah. That was. I mean, I think we've been pretty blessed, especially in our generation, for the movies that have come out. Oh, we, Absolutely. we did, yeah. Hands yep. down. Hands yep. down. I mean, even like uh, Road Warrior. Oh, those that was movies. such a classic movie. Like I remember watching Anarchy. I remember you watching know? Mad Max on cable. Yeah, where it was Mel Gibson's voice was dubbed. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he talked like this. Yeah, Goose, what are you doing? <laughs> and then um, I think I saw Gallipoli because that all of a sudden Mel Gibson got hot. So they're showing yeah. every movie he was ever yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a big history guy, so I love Gallipoli. I mean, I don't love what happened, but yeah. no. Um, what a great movie that was, and it's like. That's not how he talks. Then they finally got it right when Road Warriors got released, and then they yep. re-released Mad Max with Mel Gibson's voice. But what a great bunch of movies those are. Great. I mean, all of our movies. I mean, you can go right into Top Gun. You can go into – there's there's so I many movies. I love Top Gun. I, yeah, I wasn't Top a Gun. fan. I wasn't oh, a fan. I loved it. I, I am I not was, a Tom Cruise guy either. I, I was just, the, See, I am. Not to I mention the, the fact American that he's incredibly American handsome. Oh, he's a good-looking dude. He's a good-looking dude. Good-looking no, dude. No, I was the American – male like that was one of the movies that influenced my life i mean i knew at 12 year old 12 years old i was going to serve my country you know what i mean so it's kind of a different 
yeah. different take on it. That one volleyball you know? scene, and you're like, I'm in. Yeah, you're you're in. No, for me, it was the motorcycle going down the freeway. Yeah, you know, with the chick on his back, and he's he's like all in, like you know. Yep. The um, I would the only Tom Cruise movie that I really watch regularly is Valkyrie. What about Days of Thunder? No. Come on, <laughs> Days of Thunder. Come on, Days of Thunder is a classic. That's American. Huh? Come on, that's American. Yep. I just. Uh, yeah, I just I've never been a huge fan of his. Like I loved Risky, basically Risky Business. That was yeah, good. that hands Valkyrie, down. Yeah, that's it. Really? really? What have you done for me lately? Well, Risky <laughs> Business, you can't. I mean, that, what about that the was... one he did with the aliens? Um, he just he did War of the no. Worlds. War of the Worlds. That, 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 that was good. Bad. That was decent. What about Vanilla Sky? He did the Vanilla Sky one where it was oh. the time travel stuff. Well, he did the other one where oh. he killed the alien and then because it bled onto him, he absorbed. The, yeah, Edge, Edge of, of tomorrow. tomorrow. That was yep. phenomenal. I have friends that a friend of mine that I don't know if he still does a Tom Cruise podcast. So they take it's called Cruising, and all they do is like one episode they'll just take a Tom Cruise movie and talk about it for an hour. Oh, that's actually pretty fun. Yeah. I don't I don't yeah. even want to talk about him for an hour because he made <laughs> enough money. He's good. We're done. Next the chapter. Whole Scientology Next thing chapter. Really, yeah, uh, the whole Scientology nuts, you know? thing, and he had a beautiful wife and whatever. Done. <laughs> Next. Which one? I mean, he's had. Four, oh, he's had, he's had three? enough. Three. Yeah. three. I mean, Mimi Rogers, who was hot in the, in the 80s when the she blonde. was there. Then Nicole Kidman. Yep, Nicole Kidman. And then um, Katie Holmes. Katie Holmes. And then whoever he's with now. Nicole Kidman, hands down, Best. my crush for a long time. Dude. I yeah. don't know, though. Katie Holmes is like that girl next door. You know, she's got that perfect. I remember a friend of mine being so upset that they got married because he was like, He's going to get her and just ruin her life. <laughs> and he did. And he pretty much did. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> well, they, they had their daughter out of it. Oh, you know? speaking of like science, Scientology, you have John Travolta and that Battlefield Earth. Yep. Horrible. 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 Yep. Horrible. Terrible. That Terrible. almost made me... Because I, I was a big John Travolta fan. Dude, he made time. a lot of horrible movies. Yeah. Oh, he has. That made me almost never want to see him in a movie again. Uh. And then... Uh, well, which one did he do with the, uh, oh, God. Face Off was pretty cool. That was yep. with Nicolas Cage. Yep. Oh, that um, was good. Then he did another one where he played uh, some kind of gangster. Not a gangster, but like a head pin. He was in the Punisher movie, and he played a yeah. bad guy. Oh, that... Yeah, Punisher was a good flick. Oh. I like that. That was me and Justin's favorite. Uh... The show was better. Yeah, the show oh, was the better. Oh, the show was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ridiculously good. Was it Silver Fish he played? Was that the movie Something Fish? No, Swordfish. Uh, swordfish. 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 Yeah, swordfish. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, that was pretty decent. That was uh, okay. Halle Berry was in that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Great scene. Great scene. Yep. The um yeah, like John Travolta. Do you know that he was supposed to play Jim Morrison in a Doors movie in the mid or early eighties? Like when they were talking about having um No One Here Gets Out Alive, the Jim Morrison biography that was yeah. huge and there was a huge resurgence about of the Doors music in the eighties, eighty one, eighty two. And they wanted to make a movie, and Jim uh, John Travolta was the one that they wanted to play Jim Morrison. And well, every he was time big I off look of the at grease him, and every stuff. time I look at him, I still, I can see it. I thought that that would have been a dude. Never, never did a killer job. Oh, but, he did. Um, never mind professionally with him. That guy has in, endured more personal oh, tragedy yeah. than anybody. He was the boy in the plastic bubble. Yeah. Yeah. The original plastic yeah, That was it, man. That was yeah. when it was legit uh, plastic. Yeah. Uh, and then they did the uh, kind of spinoff remake with Jim Carrey in the, uh, oh, what was the name of that movie in the uh, 2000s? They they did a spinoff of that. Ah, oh, crap. Anyways, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> what, about, what about Keanu Reeves? I've never really been a huge fan. My wife is. Like, I don't, I don't see anything big about The Matrix. I never thought that they were that good. Um, there's not really a whole lot that I love or like him. I just I think he's like Harrison Ford. He's a presence, but I don't think he's a great actor. The movie that he did with uh, Sandra Bullock, what was it? Lake House? No, um, I think it was Lake House. Well, he did Speed. Yeah, yeah that yeah, was speed that was, was the other one. But I think it was Lake House where he was dead and then yeah, coming they back and themselves. stuff. They were in different realms, which yep. kind of correlates with like the alien thing. Um. <clears throat> That was a good movie. Like my wife loves them. What about John Wick? John Wick. I was, haven't. I haven't seen any. I of loved them, it. Oh. I, yeah, Dude, those are good. those are some of his They're best good. movies. You know what I love about him? 
how he he doesn't cut his hair. Well, <laughs> it's how he doesn't do anything. We go. Oh. He gets into his character. He gets in, the way he gets into his character. Yeah. He, that guy works. Yeah, he you know? surfed like Point Break. Yep. Point Break. He learned how to surf and stuff like that. And Great movie. That's yeah. that's one that yeah. I do like. My wife loves it. Um, it's one of those ones that I'll sit and watch. Yeah. Before Lord, that was Lori Petty before she got nutty. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a Lord of the Rings fan? No. Really? No. What about you? Uh, no. No. <laughs> I love to watch them. I can't. Like visually, they're insane. That was with the uh, the Hobbit yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like yeah. that. Okay, I did. Yep. I did watch them, but I, I don't the, really. The cartoons when I was a kid, the Ralph Bakshi cartoons, I yep. loved. But the movies, just no, no. You want you want to go to cartoons? I mean, what was your number one Saturday morning cartoon? GI Joe. Thundar the Barbarian. Ooh, that's, uh, a good one. that's a good one. Um, mine has to be He Man. It was He Man. It was, it was such too. a yeah. classic. For some reason, I uh, Snake Eyes was my favorite character. Snake like, Eyes yeah. from GI Joe. For some reason, dude, like, that was, was my dude. He was, and the uh, the white uh, snow guy. Yeah, that was that was one of my favorite. Yeah. The, uh, um, the last podcast that I did for the Radio Eclectic, ev- between every song. I counted down my five favorite cartoons as a kid. Oh, did you really? So that's why Thunder was actually for Saturday Thunder morning, Dome. It was Thund- Thunder Dome was Thund- good. Uh, Thunder the Barbarian, but I loved Battle of the Planets. Mm. But oh. that was on every day, and that was it was a Japanese cartoon. They brought it here because it had Star Wars tie-ins, not because it took place in space. Yeah. Well, Saturday um, morning was the best cartoons. Oh, that yeah. was Super you Friends. waited. You waited all yeah. week for those Saturday 20, morning cartoons. Twenty bowls of cereal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? And for me, it was I would always um, just for my love of music. Once Soul Train was over, oh, shower strap. dressed, go outside and play. Oh. Like eleven thirty, twelve o'clock. Train. Yeah, yep. till Soul eleven train o'clock. A, that's oh, when yeah. you watch the stuff, and yep. you were out. You uh, know, what you about famous? What about um, Marvel comics? Best character, I, I'm a Captain oh. America guy. I yeah. always have been. Um, I'm, I, I always hate saying that because he's so popular now. But I mean, I go back to the '70s, 1975, uh, Invaders number one. I remember getting that at the store, and that was my first because uh. I was only reading war comics and UFO comics at the time. So there was a group called the Invaders where it was Human Torch, Captain America, the Submariner, and they were fighting Nazis. I'm like, oh, this takes place in World War II. This got to be good. Uh, and just got hooked into the whole Captain America thing. Yeah. I mean, it, just the, the patriotism, the man out of time kind of thing. Yeah. I just, I well, love is everything it, about them. Are they all owned by Disney now? Or are they? Like Marvel is. Yeah, Marvel is. Yeah. Marvel is. Yeah. yeah. Now, DC's Warner Bros. Batman AT&T is DC, now? right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, so I'm trying to think of the Marvel one, I would have to say is probably Spider Man. Right, because Spider Man's yep. Marvel. Yep. Yeah, I'd, I'd have, have to agree with you on that. You know, I think yep. that's my favorite. But as far as like DC, I would have to say Batman. I'm a Batman because so he's a down. normal dude. Yeah, and that's always that was always you know? the appeal of DC to Marvel is that, you know, you could relate to Peter Parker because every kid goes through the crap that he went through, and, and then get bit by the spider yeah. and you got power. But you could not <laughs> relate to Superman because he came from another planet, yeah. or Batman because he was rich. Yeah. Um, but I I did relate to Batman not because he was rich but because he was a normal dude. Yeah. Because you had like Cyclops and all this other stuff that was like crazy off the top and you're like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And <laughs> with, like you you've seen my comic books. So I have I have 40 almost I think 42,000 comic books. I have very few X-Men and very few Spider-Man because those were the two that I never got into. Yeah. 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 I never really got into X-Men. Um, other than, uh, but I love the movies and I love the cartoons. I I was gonna say I do love yep. the movies and I do love uh, Sean Connery, whatever the uh, role he played there, the Doctor. No, that oh, was that's uh, Patrick Stewart. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, Patrick Stewart. Yeah. Sorry, I thought we were gonna go in the James Bond. He, he thing goes, sorry, oh boy, sorry, you know, sorry. Excuse me while I go shit in my wheelchair. <laughs> sorry, they they look very similar. Cyclops, get Cerebro ready. <laughs> yeah, I I did like his. Welcome no, to characters. the wrong. Have yeah. you seen the new commercial with Patrick Stewart and Mark Hamill? No. No. It's for like Grubhub or something. Are you kidding me? And He's like, still alive and so, kicking? So they're talking about like Mark Hamill like, oh, hey, your uh, burger just showed up. Oh, thanks. And it's like a really dark room. And then Patrick Stewart gets something foofy. And then they start arguing. And then Mark Hamill gets up and he's like, I'm going to take you down like a father because I'm the father. And Patrick Stewart's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, my father. 
don't know. <laughs> They've got a bunch of them, and they're really good. Are they really? Because yeah. you are getting you're you're getting Star Wars and Star Trek. You're getting them. Yeah. Represented in it, like if it was William Shatner, it would have been kind of a dumb thing. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. well yeah. the thing about William Shatner is he's horrible to his fans. Oh, I've I. He been... doesn't sign nope. anything. He doesn't even acknowledge you as a human being. I was I was I... at a show helping out. Because I knew the promoters like, hey, we need help with the um, William Shatner line, yeah. or whatever it was. I'm like, yeah, whatever you need. So I like, just stand there and kind of move people through. So basically, it was a table. This is pre-COVID. This is like 20 years ago. But there was like a plexiglass. Of course there was. And you know, he'd sign something and just slide it. Yeah. And you know, not so, even acknowledge him. No. Nope. And like somebody'd be like, "Well, I love you. Thank you." Yeah. Um, but he makes. He makes albums. I don't know if you knew that. He's got a whole recording yeah, yeah. career. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. A friend of mine, Billy Sherwood. Blues, right? No, it's everything. It's Is just it? weird stuff. Um, Billy Sherwood, um, who's the bass player for Yes, he's in Asia. So I've gotten to know Billy over the years pretty well. And he produced one of his last solo albums. Or oh, no kidding. William Shatner's. And he's like, he's a really down-to-earth guy. And he really kind of comes in. And I guess the last album, he didn't want to make it shticky. Uh, you know, like, look at I'm a rocket man. That he uh, wanted to do it serious, and I'm still like, yeah, I guess I don't hear that. <laughs> I, I, don't, I just hear rocket man. <laughs> I'm sorry if if you get to that realm of fame and money and everything else, you should be humble to your fans. Yeah, like, dude, three hours of your time is too much to freaking. And even if getting, you got to fake the funk, and you're getting a crap ton of money to be yeah. there. Yeah, even if you got to fake yep. the funk for those yep. three hours, like, come on, pay it forward. Yeah, yeah. You know, so when I hear about stars that are like too much to sign, it's like yeah, I've been no. very lucky. Like when we did the comic book thing, I wrote a Doctor Who book, so I got involved with oh wow all of that stuff as well. Oh, and wow. I never met anybody in the Doctor Who realm that weren't cool and amazing. Like I, I remember walking away. Being like, holy crap! I mean, I'm an Impressed. even bigger fan now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's good. And you, you know, you. Hello. I tend to want to know more about the person before I go to meet them or do anything. Exactly. Um, exactly. You know, like a lot of what I was doing, it would be like, you know, hey, I want to get, a, can I get a picture of you, me, in the book, and maybe chat a little bit? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that goes a long yeah. way because if they're like down to earth and they're like, all right, yep. let's do this, then it's bonus points. And yeah, I think yeah. so. Matt Smith, who was one of the more popular doctors, when I. Met him. I gave him, we took some pictures with the book and we talked a little bit. And I said, Okay, so the deal is just don't throw the book away in front of me. I go, When I walk out the door, do whatever you want. But just, <laughs> and he just looked at me and he went, oh, But he didn't throw it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, just, yeah. I mean, super cool guys. Um, everybody that I've met through there. Um, and that's a whole other thing. Like the Doctor Who world, I mean, that's a whole show in itself. Like I could go on for I can only imagine hours because yeah. that. When you have a that's a whole separate it's a whole entity. world. When you have yeah. a when you've got a show that's been on for fifty over fifty years, where the main character changes and he rewrites himself, and now it's a she, and she rewrites herself every single episode. Where I wrote my book, and it's a it's sort of a it's a history book about the show. Yeah. And I remember writing one chapter, and then an episode came on, and I'm like, oh my god, I got to rewrite this whole chapter because. Three lines just des destroyed, destroyed everything. Yeah. everything yeah. That they just wrote. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's you know like that whole world, the fandom there is is insane and crazy. But it's a lot of fun. Yep. Um, but yeah, like of all the people, William Shatner. It's everything I've everything that you hear about his reputation. And you know he, he might be a good guy outside. Billy Sherwood. I I love Billy. Dude, I'm I, sorry. I if you got Terry Bradshaw saying that you're uppity. Oh my god. Terry yeah. Bradshaw has got to be like the coolest human being, <laughs> right? Ever I would love lived. to have a beer with Terry yeah. Bradshaw. Yeah. All right, boys, we got to shut this down. What? Are we done be already? Cooper. It has been two hours. Look at the time. Dude, we need to do this again. We're gonna have a part two. We need we to have a part two. Really conspiracy theory. So we that's gonna be it. our next one. We yeah. just been BSing. That's right. This is what this is what it's about, man. It is. You Hello? know. See I mean, where it goes. Did we, did we drop anything that people are gonna go like, "Oh my god, I can't believe they said that." No. Like, you know, we we're not going to trigger anybody. No, I, no. I this started is not the, swearing. This I is mean, not the no. show that I mean. Somebody's going to go. He doesn't like Keanu Reeves, <laughs> dude. I, I mean, think if that's we, the worst we get. It's, I think I we have another it. solid ten hours of stuff between the three oh, yeah. of us. Yeah, like, absolutely. I feel like we didn't even really touch anything. Yeah. So we'll we'll, we'll do this again soon, definitely, um, without a doubt. You know, this this is, we do these one a week. So I'm in. We uh, you know, this is a blast. I am not scared. We can definitely do this again. <laughs> 
<laughs> I had I had a blast. This is probably one of my my most fun. Dude, um, I've had a know. blast. Like I I didn't feel like we we jived very well. We didn't cut each other off. Yeah. We let each other talk. We went to we probably went to sixty different topics. Yeah, and we touched very little of each one. Yep, that's okay. Yeah, because that gives us enough. more ammo for, ammo for next time. Yep. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm waiting for his uh, spinoff show. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Um, go ahead and give your uh, podcast one more plug. All right. Uh, Powerchordspodcast.weebly.com. The Radio Eclectic at Podomatic. Um, Striper 53.5, the official Striper podcast at striper.com. And you can go to my Facebook page. It's Matt, Matt Man Herring. And you get all your information there. Beautiful. And I'm just going to th- simply throw out a uh, Semper Fi to all you fellow Marines out there. Hoorah. And uh, thank you to everybody that has ever served or is thinking about serving. Absolutely. No matter what your branch is. I was Absolutely. hoping you weren't going to say, and I want to say a thank you to my wife because then I'd be like, <laughs> oh, crap, I didn't say. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you threw it out there. Thank you, Amy Beth. Thank I you, love Amy you. Beth. And uh, thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, it was a pleasure having you guys, Bobby. I really appreciate Dude, you coming awesome. out, buddy. Seriously, I had so much fun. Yeah, and we'll do this again soon. Definitely. Uh, you know, thank you guys for supporting me and supporting our uh, all our guests, um, and we'll see you next week. Woo-hoo. Have a great night. See ya.